<laughs> Topic one. In a Texas school district, uh, some students hosted an online slave auction for their classmates. On social media, they auctioned off black students while making racist comments about them. These students were eventually discovered and punished. But for legal reasons, uh, these disciplinary actions were kept private. What would you like to see done to these students? Is rehabilitation a possibility? If you could reveal all the identities of the offending students, would you? Uh, do you think that would help? And credit to our friend Jishu Gambit, who unfortunately couldn't join us uh, today, but uh, he's one who brought this to my attention. So yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> um, so they were on some social media websites and uh, they were talking about other students and the like quote prices for their students. And then like um, the prices would go up and down depending on their characteristics. And they were saying all kinds of racist things about them. That's what happened. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I did this thing. It was crazy. Uh, let me, um, I'll even put the, um, article in chat for everyone so you guys can see. <laughs> yeah, so they, they decided to do, uh, do this. So, because you think we're making this up, this is a thing that happened. <laughs> so, yeah, so the district discovered that this was, uh, going on. And at first, it was, seemed to be kind of sweeping it under the rug. Um, but, uh, was, they were, because of the backlash, obvious backlash, called out as racist <laughs> um and uh so they've taken action against the students but we don't know what it was and wondering just yeah what were your opinions on what should happen in the students if you knew about them and would you let the public know who they are all right so we'll start with b more b more help us out so overall i don't want these kids outed because uh just because they went out cyber bullying, bullying someone i don't think we need to make it easy for them to be cyber bullied but overall in order for us to have consistency we need some level of transparency and then not only that i wouldn't have an issue with this being on their academic records so institutions know well who do you, who they're investing in you know when it comes to scholarships or when it comes to uh accepting them as college students but nah outed no thank you and is there any chance for them to recover or, or bounce back obviously they're kids like or i do re um, believe in rehabilitation but that's pretty much my take on it okay thanks so much next hi Bro, Tyre, thank you for being here. Um, oh, I said thank you. I'm repeating that. Pyro Tyre, you go for your minute, <laughs> minute introduction. So um, reading this, I'm like, holy shit, I'm just kind of baffled by this. Because one thing the article notes is like, uh, it doesn't seem to just be high schoolers. There seems to be some elementary students in this. And like, I do believe there can be rehabilitation. What that is going to possibly look like if like, they're just doing this thinking it's funsies and jokes. I have no idea. Um, yeah, I'm with B more on this. I don't think like, especially since these are minors that like, oh, uh, I, I'm not sure how much information in this subject should be uh, actually released to the public, knowing how things can go when motherfuckers get a hold of shit like this. Um, and uh but, like, I do want to know what type of repercussions they're approaching because, like, they can say, like, oh, we're going to do this uh, behind closed doors and then, like, you know, it's a slap on the wrist and then it just happens again, right? Like, I don't want that to happen. I I want to see some type of a... Uh, what 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 do they... I want to see what their plan is for this, basically. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's go to... Okay, let's go to Azzy. Azzy, please. Okay. Oh, and uh, so yeah, my comments on this is uh, listen, if the whole the whole reason people continue to do this, th th this is 2021. It's almost the end of the year. We've been through so much social media on social media. Uh, there's been so much advent. Uh, people have died over things like this. People continue to die over things like this, and yet we still have you know, numbskulls out here doing whatever they want to do. And I feel like, hey, if you feel like they should be fine, I, I feel like they should be fine. Uh, they should be whatever schools they're attending. They sh there should be some type of reprimand, suspension, in-school suspension. I don't care. Uh, if they got to do some, if if they have to be rehabilitated or, uh, yeah, I, 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 if we want to reconcile this, we, we there has to be some type of, like, stark, uh, stark heavy punishment if they have to be outed for them to never you know do this again so you know listen if the if the darkness has to come to light so that these people can be, get better i'm for it 
I'm really am tired of people. These uh, the uh, if I'm uh, someone saying in chat, uh, kids fines. If if their kids, I don't know. It, it it doesn't have to be a fine. But listen, if if someone's identity has to be exposed for them to do right, I'm for it. I'm tired of no names out here going around just ruining people's lives. I was having a conversation in chat with somebody about um the level of jokes that are acceptable in this discourse. And we were talking about political correctness and all that. Some jokes aren't funny. Some jokes are predatory. They should not be allowed. And I'm tired of this no names just feeling like they can do whatever they want. Listen, if, if you if you're if you're so bold to say it with no face, you should be bold enough to say it with a face. Because I'm fully I fully believe that if you're saying it, it's if it's in your if you're saying it's coming out your mouth, you really believe this stuff. Mm -hmm. Let these people, you know, experience some tough love. Shout out to Pablo Laflame. Thank you. Right, cut sleep. Uh, can't hear you, buddy. If you're talking, hear me. Yep, now we can hear you. Hello. Yeah. Can Can you guys hear me now? Okay. So when people say we live in a post-racist society or a post-prejudice society, us people who are the minorities in you know not only just the panel but around America could point to examples like these and say, no, we don't live in a post-racist society. The war still needs to be fought on. Now, specifically on the question of what's the punishment for racism outside of a school in an online setting, if you were to punish this in a serious manner, you would file this under cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is illegal in Texas. It was made illegal in 2017 under David's law in honor of David Muller, who was a victim of such horrendous acts. Under the Senate Bill 179, David's law gives the school explicit right to expel the students for inciting violence. I yield. That was superb. I'll, I'll be honest. Sir. <laughs> okay, Cusley. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, fanatic. Um, I think it it sucks. But living like in in a world right now where everything can be like seen through the internet, uh, I can totally understand like people being completely outraged and wanting something done about this. Unfortunately, uh, I also recognize that, again, these are children. I, if if there were logs of all of the nonsense that I did as a kid, um, it'd be pretty absurd. Um, I don't think that this is something that we should just all ignore. Uh, but I definitely recognize that, again, kids are going to be kids. Um, they need to be punished, but we can't, like, out them. Like, we can't, like, have... Like uh, you know, society at large, kind of knowing what exact who these people are, um, th that would expose them to too many risks that are just not sensible. Um, uh, but it does suck. Uh, I think um, it's it's absolutely horrible. Um, I wish there was some sort of way we could punish the parents for these kind of for this kind of thing because clearly the parents failed. Um, but uh, ultimately, yeah, I mean, I mean, it sucks. I just I'm a hundred percent opposed to like, this information coming out. Great, thanks so much. All right, next. Truth. Um, I'm going to come on uh, probably a little closer on this to uh, cut sleeve, a little harsher though. Um, yeah, definitely expulsion. Um, so from my reading of the article, the youngest they could be 14, it just says they're high school age and doesn't specify. But I know that in this area from the same article, they talk about a noose was found a week later, 15 miles from the campus. And that the same stunt that this article is describing was repeated in the weeks after. So they started a trend. And um, you look into it, the county 78% white. Um, I'm less, less inclined to give them mercy. I feel as though any social consequences that happen to them in this age of the internet, there's no holding this thing back, right? We can try to cherry pick situations where we shield people from the consequence of the internet. But when you're actively participating in it the students took photos and information of black students and put it up on the internet to make fun of them so they had no concern for the the black students uh and whether or not they wanted to be you know spread across the internet and mocked and then that bites them in the butt no i can't save them from that because that's the karma that hopefully teaches them a lesson um obviously empathy wasn't enough for them Right, the ability for them to sit there with their own volition. And I don't want to hear my dad was a racist as an excuse. This country ended slavery. Okay, obviously there's a legacy of racism, but some people can overcome it, some people can't. I have to question those who can't overcome their cultural baggage. 
if you can't overcome the fact that your dad's racist and you want to meme at school and make fun of black students, well, if the internet decides to eat you alive for that, I call that fucking beautiful because uh, 20 years ago, no one would have cared. 30, 40 years ago, no one would have cared. So I don't know. It, I think that even if, even if something really horrible happens, let's say they get death threats and people are really harassing them, it's not that I want that to happen that to that to them, but more so that you 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 shouldn't be doing that behavior that can get you that consequence. Like, and the fact that they're so oblivious to it, they need to be made an example out of. And it's not like there's some innocent actor anyway. I won't believe that too much longer. And then so um, yeah, expulsion, um, harassment charges. I think hate uh, uh what's it called um. Uh, harassment that's of a racist nature. I can't really, hate crimes. I, I think that when you take harassment and make it prejudice, bigoted, discriminatory, a, a hate crime of sorts, I think that that's its own charge. And I think, yeah, cyberbullying, harassment, hate crime. Because it, that, like, isn't that slander to some degree? If I take a picture of you, any random person, and I just start defaming you, and I just start saying horrific things about you, let alone that it's racially charged, it, do that to any random person. It's like, no, they, they deserve criminal consequences. One last example, many black young uh, individuals would get charged as adults for criminal offenses. Oh, he was acting like an adult. He knew what he was doing. They're in high school. They're 14 plus. They're on their way to being young adults. They need to learn now that they're, they're not going to be protected from their social behaviors. So like, this is when they really need to learn it. And that, that's, uh, that's my piece. Adam? Yeah, when I first read this article, I had to like reread the whole thing because I was like, wait, I like it's not something I could fathom happening in a high school, but like, um, obviously this is bad and it's uh, it's um, more than just bad, it's like a signal of like what's going on in that community because when you take like uh, the only reason, like, it's obviously a joke, but the only way a joke is funny is if like people in the like that are observing the joke would like find it funny like if i did this in my high school everyone would look at me like i'm like i was like an idiot and like tell me to like fuck off so like um it's it's definitely not okay now i don't think we need to like make these kids identities public um they're already probably gonna be um like come not come down on by like their like probably entire school district like um, while the internet might know who they are, their classmates obviously know who they are, and it's gonna spread. Parents are gonna hate them. They're like, they're probably gonna go through so much, and maybe a little bit rightfully so. But like, that doesn't mean we need to like release their information to like the public, and then like, like because you know what the internet does. Like, they're on Twitter. Next thing you know, they have death threats in their mailboxes and shit like that. And like, they're kids at the end of the day. And while yeah, people talk about trying kids as adults, which is, like, I don't even know if that's always okay. I think that we need to, like, step back and, like, watch this district and this community, and they need to use it as a teaching moment, not only to target these students, but, like, their entire, like, student body um, and their entire, like, um, like community. Thanks so much. Open to the panel. So, uh, truth, like, I understand what you're saying, right? And, and that's the reason why I'm not against like a progressive, like progressive discipline. But usually when that's used, like people are talking about like the same individual committing this, you know, acts, so then punishments increase. But I, I would support progressive discipline as in as these cases keep persisting or occurring, then the punishments get more harsher and harsher and harsher. But um, like what exactly would you want? You know what I mean? Because I, I won't just say right off the bat that I, I, I'm, I, I don't, you know, I don't agree with you. I want to know, like, what would you want? You know? Um, I would just want like whatever the legal system would give them normally. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause they like expulsion. Got, yeah. Ex well, definitely expulsion, but, uh, criminally that like, to me, it needs to be a crime to take someone's image and information and spread hateful content about them. That's pure, especially if it's racially charged. Right. And if I can steal man that they basically dox those individuals in, in a form of hate crime. We yeah. charge hate crimes. You can go to juvenile hall, and then to to double up on that, when Truth was talking about uh, it, black individual, I think Truth, you were talking about black individuals who go to who go to jail. Those their whole identities are broadcasted throughout news media. 
it's, it's broadcast that we know who they are, we know where they live, we know who their families are. So why are we trying to protect individuals who are actually doing wrong, committing full-on hate crimes, doxing people, putting those lives in danger? No, there's, yeah. there's, yeah. So specifically, what you guys are talking about under the David's law, one of the three, uh, the two other categories that what you can be filed under is one, trying to force a kid to commit suicide, and two, essentially doxing, like revealing the kid's identity without their permission. Exactly. I'm pretty sure, and you, you also brought up cut sleeve of the, the law, the Mars law about bullying. It's illegal. They broke laws. Yeah. Some of them are, full, are, are, are grown enough. They, listen, at the end of the day, listen, that the book, throw the book at them. I'm, I'm sorry. Listen, yeah. as this long as why, they're, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, this is why I said earlier that we need transparency in order to see if there's any consistency. But what's funny is in this case, the fact that they weren't even charged goes to show. That there's no consistency, because yeah. God forbid a black person breaks the law. Um, you know, uh, the these same. communities, these pretty, these communities are pretty good at like. Um, let me see. How do I say this? Circling the wagons. In a way, it's like you know, if they don't like something, like you know, critical race theory, they can band together and get it banned in a heartbeat. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> So it's like, this is on the books for a damn reason, you know? Because they could have just repealed it just the way they, you know, repealed uh, CRT within the schools. They need to follow the damn law. I got, you know, they're going to have to follow the law to the T. And if they don't like the law, then they can repeal it. But um, it, it's as easy as a role reversal. Imagine a group of black kids bullying and harassing and putting up and defaming white students. Like, what? They would never stand for that. It's absurd. It's just. Once, it's absurd. once upon a time, they died for that. Yeah, hmm. exactly. Why people get killed for way less than that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure first, so I went ahead and looked it up. Um, that this this is you this is not this wouldn't be char applicable under like Texas's uh hate crime law. Um it, it's for 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 the for it to be a hate for hate crime, they have to do criminal mischief, uh, gra uh graffiti to your property, commit arson, or commit a physical crime against your person. Um yeah. so, so I, I, all Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. To, think to be clear, I don't I believe that they um that they like dox these kids. Like maybe, but um, from what it seems like, this is like a uh, like a like a Snapchat group, like basically a group chat between students. It wasn't like a like they went on like Facebook or YouTube and like posted this. Sure. Um, I, no, may, maybe it made it out there eventually, but like that wasn't, it doesn't seem like that's what happened. There's not a ton of detail on it in the article, and I've looked at a few others that don't I mean, really they, talk about like exactly what happened. Sure. They and even if chat, they made a group chat entitled the group chat nigga auction. Yeah, yeah I which think is that's obviously I, fucked up, right? It is terrible, but it's not the same thing as like doxing people, number one. And number two, again, this. I don't think the fact that they weren't physically, like they weren't cr charged for a crime is indicative of the fact that something was swept under the rug. Now, I'm not denying the fact that it could have been swept underneath the rug, but I'm just saying the fact that they weren't charged for a crime that clearly wouldn't apply to them understanding what the hate crime is, um, then it doesn't make any sense. Um, I, I, what I will say is I do think, like, again, expulsion is a, is a, is a valid option. Um, so mm -hmm. some, some sort of punishment is a valid option. Um, but again, when it comes to these kind of things, uh, it's like a Pandora's box situation. Every time we want to think about, like, oh, yes, we want these punishments for all of you punitive folks in this conversation, consider the fact that some of you might like the idea of the death penalty until you discover that the death penalty is pretty much used against black people, but not used against white people in similar situations. There's, like, significantly more likelihood if the victim is white, um, by a black person for the death penalty to be applied than if the victim is black by a white person. So then, or when you start finding about like ch uh, being charged as an adult and you find that prosecutors choose to do this significantly more frequently when it's a black person versus when it's a white person. So when it comes to the protection of children, um, I, even if we completely remove the racial element from this, um, the idea that we would like want like information about the punishment of children just seems a little bit scary to me. Like I don't- Not I at all. It actually stops exactly what you're what you're what you're saying. Like for example, you're saying that you know black people are going to be plagued by this more than white folks. Well, if you have the actual data from schools and they discipline people, we'll be able to make that decision. It's like I don't know. I don't I don't see the calling for the expelling these kids as Pandora's oh. box. I think keeping it secret. No, no, no. I didn't, is no, a I didn't true say that. Issue. 
I didn't okay. say calling for expelling. I, I said okay. expulsion is a, is a viable thing. I'm okay, saying, gotcha, gotcha. I'm saying that the request for the information to be made public and the request for the inform request for the information on the children themselves. I think that's a very very bad thing. It's a very slippery slope. We obviously need the protection. I, I like I I just I don't think that that's a good idea. And I also want to point out that just simply having data does nothing to change anything. We have all the data for the for for all these disparities regarding uh, trying children as adults, regarding um, a mandatory minimum sentences, regarding the crack cocaine disparity, regarding the death penalty. We have all of this data. This stuff has never been like dismissed. We have data you, on on people being pulled over. That doesn't change anything. Just simply having you, data doesn't mean anything at all. But would you be okay with us knowing that kids were expelled for the situation like that alone? Sure, sure. That alone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I, I think. Oh, sorry, I want to go to Pyro. We had his hand up, and then we'll go to you, Adam. Like, uh, like the fucking Discord decided it was gonna update right in the middle of like some of the good points, and I just wanted to ask, like, what you know, like, because people were bringing up doxing and stuff. Like, if the article isn't fully giving the information, that's one thing. But like, this was a Snapchat group, right, within like a school or something. Mm -hmm. So how would that constitute as doxing? Like, were they actually releasing information about who these students were or where they lived? Or was it in, like, a school community where, like, a lot of people, their friends or, you know, they know each other, they have their Snapchats, right? Like, it's not like, yeah. you know, other within the school. Yeah, it probably doesn't qualify as doxing. Yeah, I think we can at least that, yeah. That's okay. what I wanted to hit back against. Like, that was my only point. Because, like, when we're talking about this and then we're bringing up shit like doxing and releasing of information and, like, actually making this publicly known for, like, harassment to come against these black students, that's one thing. But, like, I don't agree with the, like, shitty jokes, the racially charged jokes. But, like, th this was within a closed group. I don't want to attack this closed group, you know, Wait, we so were in how... a private Snapchat thing as the same thing as like doxing or something because yeah. i think doxing is something can be a very serious issue in itself and when you mix it with this it can get muddy so mm. how did the snapchat come to light if it was a private like that, 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 that's well, question well, i would probably, have probably right? like, yeah, i mean well, most I likely what happened is like a kid who was uncomfortable with it got added or like some parents saw it in some kid's phone and then they screenshotted it and were like hey, yo like brought it to like the school board and was like this isn't cool like yeah, that um, thing, like the article doesn't mean that. Like if, if the, it came to light because like they shared it on the Twitter or something, that's one thing. But like, well, if then it was, it's... but like that, we don't know, right? We don't know how this came to light. It could have been someone yeah. sharing it on the Twitter. It could have been like a dolphin just yeah. said, a parent seeing it and being like, "Yo, this is a little bit what too difference much." Does it matter well, how it came to light? Because it's not doxing. Yeah, it's not it's doxing. Just, no, we yeah. get that. We all agree with that. We all agree. Not doxing. Yeah, we, we kind of, uh, yeah. you might have missed that when you got like. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I might, I might, yeah. Uh, go ahead, but, Chris. Um, I want to ask a question. Oh. oh, Chris. I think the important context to remember is the, you know, a noose uh, 15 miles from the school found in the tree, um, that this same uh, stunt was repeated in the weeks following this uh, story. So, um, this did not like this going viral did not deter it. They kind of got hyped off of it because so, it, it's a, well, that, a lot of yeah. Hate. So I think you're making like a so good point, um, but kind of in the wrong way. The noose thing happened, um, like prior. So that was like in 2018, like 15 miles from the school they found the noose. Um, there was also a girl yeah. who was like eight years old who previously, um, was like held to the ground, and then like some someone held this girl to the ground. Or tackled this girl to the ground. They said, "Hey, I can't breathe." And like, "Hey, put a knee on her neck." Like, that was a joke that was made prior. And then afterwards, there were um, flyers that were sent out um, for like a great sale of slaves. And it's like, I read the flyer, and it's like really fucked up. And uh, obviously, um, but like the point I would make is that I don't know if they necessarily started a trend. Well, the flyer thing's not cool, but I would say that like it seems like this community or this like high school has like a lot of like a past and a present and like a problem of like, like racist sort of like undertones running in it. And like, I think well, this, like, it, like punishing the students is cool. And like, we can talk about like, what's okay for punishing it. But I think like, what's way more important is that like the, the school uses this as like a teaching moment to like evaluate how they approach like, um, like racial, not just racial biases, but like, like just like, treatment of people based on race in their like school district and like take that and like push it out to their students uh let's go oh, to, like uh, um let's, uh, let's try to go cut sleep and then we'll go to Ira. yeah so specifically my question is and it's kind of a major pivot but 
does the context of everything change if the students who were making the joke were also black? No, um, because like I was gonna make it to Dolphin's point. It seems like a lot of the issues that we keep seeing reoccur in this community is a problem with the community, right? We can just relegate it to the schools if we want, but it's obvious that motherfuckers know about this. It's not like some little secret or something. It's something that keeps reoccurring and people are just okay with letting happen. So like, we can talk about punishing the kids, but we talk about that, we need to realize like, yeah, we're just gonna have to keep like sending kids to the chopping block. Cause if we don't figure out what the fuck is wrong with this community where like shit like this can happen all the time, like we're not gonna be able to like actually address the problem. What, what is the mystery about what's going on in this community? I don't know, this is a mystery? Um, no, uh, I'm not, no, 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 no wait, I'm not saying like it's a yeah, yeah, we know it's we, we know oh, what okay. it is, okay, right? Great. But like so what the fuck is going no no I'm not saying like dude be real like I'm not saying we need to like mm, what what which with the racism I'm saying like why are the uh higher ups of these community letting this slide? Is there a way we can uh get them out through like voting and shit, like in these city councils or whatever? And then like getting a city council that might actually take this seriously, right? Like well, yeah, it's, it's, it's... Uh, way that's a good stretch, but it's like, so I looked it up, the, the, the article says it, I mean, 78% white, they, honestly, that's a whole separate convo, but uh, I feel like white people should move out of some areas, like, Jesus Christ. Um, that being said, um, yeah, um, so to the doxing thing, just to nail it in the coffin, um, mis misstep on the doxing, but the point I was really getting at wasn't so much that, like, oh, okay, they're literally um, risking the identity of these students, but rather they have no fear of that consequence. They have absolute negligence. It's like that Wharton disregard is in itself criminal, right? Let alone the fact that the intent was malicious and racist and hateful. And so um, the full context, that's what makes me go, okay, you know, we, they had, if they were to find out someone got docs, they would have laughed at it. So even if they didn't purposely go out of their way to do it, it was more so like that. The the anyway. So um, wait, but we 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 can't do that though. We can't we can't just make assumptions based off of this situation about the way that they would have handled other like tangential crimes and things like that. And you don't punish people for the potential or for their spirit on what they might have possibly done. Um, to that's not what I was like, uh, No, I wasn't. <laughs> what, what I was what I was saying is I would I, I would not. I personally would not think that, because this is not a legal concept. This is a social consequence thing. I personally would not have an issue with their, per with their identities getting revealed to the public and people sending them hate and death threats. Not that I would want that to happen to them, but rather it wouldn't necessarily bother me if it did because they brought it amongst themselves. They're not like innocent actors that just had this happen out of nowhere. They were hateful and they got hate back. That that's okay with me. Well, for sure. But yeah. I mean, in, in, in within reason, I like the idea of karma. I believe you reap what you sow. But I think when it comes to children, I do think that we have to allow children to be children. Now, that doesn't mean, again, that that, com that somehow protects you from literally all sorts of ramifications. But what I, what I would say is we keep things reasonable. Um, I think exposing children, like, uh, you know, especially children as young as 14, Lord have mercy, the amount of nonsense that I did, I wouldn't be here. Like, I, like it's just insane. So, I think the idea that we would like want to punish these children and just allow the, the streets of justice to dole out punishment sounds a little bit ridiculous. I, again, I want punishment. I want expulsion. I want examples to be made. I want I want the community to be better. I want transparency. I want all of these things. I want justice. But I don't think the justice should come from a social thing. And, and clearly, it's not a legal thing, like what, what we're talking about there. And socially, I already feel like socially, um, Children during an awkward social stage, such as freshman year, the idea that we're going to expose them to social justice when we see how absolutely ridiculous social justice is already, it just sounds absurd to me. They're kids. Mm -hmm. All right. No, the, no, quite, no, the question no, no, I'd ask. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on. Like, as he, as he oh, before, you, before, you ask, before you ask the question, listen. Uh, e before you even try to cuss, I said doxing. Okay, I'll every track, but I still I'm not all the way because I know the name of the guy who the 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 images were about the the group was the group was about his name is chris johnson his name is in the article i know who he is i can do an easy search to find out who he is Wait, his his, his name, identity is out there so, but like is that article he made a public statement yeah. like that's totally different than like, being 
I, it doesn't, I didn't, uh, number one, I said, I'm making a point is I know who the individual is who was humiliated. I don't know any one of these students who are the perpetrators. That's, we don't have to call it doxing. But at the end of the day, the person who was humiliated and made a statement about it, and thank God he did, otherwise we probably wouldn't have known that the community who's been allowing this to go on for, like we were talking about um, in another panel about how the Christians were allowing those, those um, priests to sexually assault the students. And the, and the people didn't want to do anything and the cops didn't, weren't able to do anything because the people weren't, because they were protecting the bad actors and they were just letting it go on, it continued to go on. And, and to um, Cutsleeve's point, this is a social and a legal because Cutsleeve's already established that they, this is a form of cyberbullying. It's illegal. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, this could totally be legal and cyberbullying. This, but like, this, yeah, so, just because, this, wait, just because just one of the finish, students that were a part of I this wanna, who like, so decided, decided that it was okay for them to come out and like make a statement yeah, yeah. and say, hey, I want to like make a statement about what happened to me does not mean that we, like all of these kids' identities should be made public. Like, that's, that's like not like an okay thing not, to do. It's that's not, not, it's, not, not about, it's not yeah, it's, it's it's not it's not a like it's not a matter of they it must happen. It's it's a it's a matter of principle. I know who the the victim is. I don't know any of the perpetrators. And that usually that that kind of happens a lot within history. We know who the victim is. We don't know who di who did it. And that's a, that's an issue. That's an issue that's continued to have been set as a precedent. We need new precedents. Like we're we're like we're we're trying to protect kids. Kids die all around the world. Like we're doing our so, best so to protect kids, kids die around the world. So like we these kids get death threats in the mail and be bullied. It's listen, but at, at the end of the day, I'm not I'm not uh, advocating for death threats. We don't know if death threats are going to happen. Come on, let's be fucking ridiculous. real. Let's be <laughs> fucking real for a minute, okay? You can't. Yeah, no, 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 Azzy, Azzy, hold on, hold on. Because we know from no, don't need we to know use. from this panel alone that like you can make the smallest comment that someone could disagree with, and you'll get a fucking death threat. That's ridiculous. Uh, these kids has a actually on Twitter, and then she gets death threats. Hold on, hold on. Obviously, these kids like, like oh, let's no, one at a time, time, one at a time. Stop, 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 one at a time. Uh, finish your point. Uh, Listen, Adam. I, I, Adam, 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 finish your point. You, oh, I was gonna say, like, women literally, like, accidentally, like, slip a nipple on stream and they get death threats. Well, like, people, like, do, like, very silly things. Like, a woman's rude to a dude in the park, maybe a little bit racially, and she gets death threats. Like, any time that, like, something bad in the internet deems that these people are just demons, they, like, send them death threats. To act like we don't know that death threats are coming to these people if we release their identities is, like, no, living no. in, like, a box somewhere. Like, you like, don't know what reality is. Listen, what I'm trying to say <laughs> is plenty of people, as, as every, can you, can you, can you quantify, uh, listen, can you say for every single example of somebody doing something egregious on the internet, then all of a sudden they get death threats? That's what the point I'm trying to make. We don't know what's going to happen yet. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I'm pretty sure it's, it may happen. It may happen. I have, yes. I have a question. Doesn't I have mean... a question for the group. I have a question for the group. Imagine a world without the internet. Would we still protect our identity? Is no, it they would end, end up in the newspaper. The newspaper. They would end up well, in the newspaper. Oh. Of I mean, children, maybe. yeah, no, like of children and minors, yeah, we probably wouldn't release. No, a we lot. wouldn't. Probably, yeah. if it were like without the internet and we were relegated to newspapers and shit, we probably wouldn't release too much information because we'd be worried about protecting the kids. Like, it sucks that we would think like that, but we would probably think like that. We wouldn't do something where it's like, mm -hmm. yo, we're gonna actually print their names and shit out. I'm, and, like, I'm, not, trying to, I'm not trying to protect. I'm not trying to protect perpetrators. I'm 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 sorry. Certain jokes, certain jokes should not be protected. I'm Wait, not trying to protect. We, we have to remember you like perpetrators. By the way, by the way, they're not like perpetrators. They're children, right? Like when you go to court, you don't consider people. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's try this, right? For the people who uh don't want to reveal these people, uh, these children's names, let's change the crime just for a bit. If this, if these uh, children had instead beat up a black kid, would you want their names released? Actually, physi no. actually physically assaulted someone and were charges were pressed. Yeah, I would want their names and shit. No, no, maybe charges oh, aren't pressed. God. Maybe charges aren't pressed because they are afraid. It doesn't even have to be charges. Yeah, yeah, maybe charges aren't pressed because the uh, um, they physically is afraid assaulted. of... 
Oh no, the fa oh, you can not you can decide to not press charges, right? The family can have all kinds of reasons not to press charges. But in any case, sure. if that was the case, I'm just trying to uh, figure out like what's the dividing line here. Um, uh, in that case, would it uh, would it be okay to release them to release the names? No, no, for no reason. If charges like, if aren't reason, pressed, no. no like e even the so, look, we already have precedent for this. When it comes to like child court, like those cases are already sealed. We do that for a reason because people are children. We understand the necessity of children to be able to make mistakes. And I don't want to live in a tyrannical government or a tyrannical community in which everybody thinks that even people as young as children should be held to the same standards as adults. I think the idea of charging children as adults is stupid. And we obviously already have president within this presidents within this country. Who said of anything about charging sure them that... as adults? No one said okay. They don't need to be told. said that? People no. have said that, but... that, that has been no, 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 we said, so we said that kids have something that should never, ever happen. And furthermore, there is a very clear. Oh. The reason why I needed to make that statement here is because there is a very clear distinction when it comes to child court in this country. Child court trials are not released publicly. There's a reason for that. And I think that should extend um, when it comes to social ramifications and social uh, punishments as well. They are children. No, we don't need to release their information publicly. Again, we can release what happened and what the school did. You can leave, easily leave them as John Doe's or Johnny Donuts and then punish them and let people know that there was punishment. So you get a sense of justice. You don't need to know the individual. What is the benefit of knowing the individual's names there? Explain Shame. that to me. Uh -oh. What is the benefit? No. Sorry, well, well, I'll let Chris go. I was going to say, on the first half, I'm sympathetic to your point. I get the concept. You're universal on protecting children, and that's admirable. Like, and I mean that full for, like, I mean that. Um, it, it gives pause, right? It gives pause to my thoughts. But um, on the other hand, I am a big believer in the power of shaming, right? Like, that, that is, um, there, for example, there are certain counties where um, when juveniles are charged, they have to hold a sign that says, I'm a thief. I'm a big old thief. You can't trust me. My hands is hot. Right, and they gotta stand on the the side of the freeway. Shame, humiliation, social. Show me that. Where? Yeah, where, that, where, that should be cruel and unusual punishment. Where the fuck yeah, is that? Like, yeah, are we actually? Yeah. Wait, I just I, can I like well, like no are offense, we? Hold on, hold on, real fast, real fast. No offense to what Dolphin said. I've been to jail. Jail's already cruel and unusual punishment. So like that's a whole fucking bag of you don't want to go there. So do more. <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about like what already I'm is. Saying, we're talking about what we should do. Average child. Hey, do you want to get locked up in a permanent uh, intention, uh, detention facility, or would you like to have a stupid sign on your head? Okay, so like, like what do you even say? So anyway, no, um, no, no, but that's not that's not the point. It's not. No, but I'm saying, children. I'm saying he said, oh, that would be cruel and uh, unusual punishment. I'm saying, well, if you actually know how jail works, they feed you less calories than necessary to survive. They give you inhumane Geneva Convention breaking standards. One, the jails in Phoenix, literally, they had you in 120 degree weather in camps. So I'm just saying, I don't think you know punishment. Wait, like, I'm not saying that jail is, conditions are good. Okay, no, but I'm like, not, legally, not in the are. United I'm States, we have something that we call I'm cruel not, and unusual punishment. I'm and by the constitution of our country, it's you illegal. Hold it off, right? You're please, not allowed to please, do please, it. Please. We've deemed well, jail is okay. And that doesn't mean that's right. But like, that doesn't mean we go shaming people on like making them wear signs on okay, street okay, corners. So or like publicly shaming them in the eyes so that they feel bad about what they did. Especially when it comes to children. The whole reason that we punish children differently is because they don't understand the long-term ramifications of the actions they make in the moment. So well, like, that's the high that's a high underestimation of can children. I, Wait, can how is that yes. a high estimate? Well, you could say it's a low oh, estimation of children, maybe. A but high underestimation. Why we treat okay, children this differently. This is the tangent. Whoa, 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 shut up. Let Chris respond and then we'll, we'll go to uh, Pyro. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, yeah, no, so I wasn't suggesting that you were saying that this, uh, that the, I, w I wasn't saying that by saying, oh, jail's already cruel and unusual punishment based off like definitions of what cruel and unusual are to say that you are therefore defending that. I was saying that, that we already have a precedent of doing this and our jail system is much worse than that. So like interrupting me for that is just rude and pointless. What I'm saying is we already have a precedent of humiliation as a punishment, especially for juveniles. But we've even done it for adults, but it's most predominantly used for juveniles. And as someone who was involved in crime as a kid, if you gave me the choice between juvie and humiliation, I'm taking humiliation. Now, you might say the kid shouldn't have to choose that. That's not my fucking point, is it? 
Like I, that's that's just literally redirecting my point. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. No, 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 please, Jesus. Hey, okay, so with that being said, when it comes to the concept of humiliation as a as a deterrent to re uh, repetitious criminal behavior, in other words, you get a social consequence. It stings. You get known as that thing, and now you're oh, I'm a pariah, and you don't want to be known as that thing. When you have a community where everyone is racist and encouraging the behavior, I think it might actually be a good experiment to see what happens if everyone sees them on a global level and they get that global consequence versus that local uh, congratulations, right? You're in a racist community where like 50 to 70% of the people you bump into are giving you thumbs up for your racist antics, but then the world sees you and is disgusted and now you got to sit there and think, do I value the world's opinion more than my local community's opinion? This logic is already inspired in the concept of you holding a sign that says, I'm a thief. Like, we Show me that. Where does that so, happen? Wait, well, hold on. Can I ask a question? Wait, 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 Mr. Fanatic, hold on. Can I ask a quick question? Because I want to okay, um, right actually, I, I actually want to ask you, you, Mr. Truth, uh, do you think that if this happens to these children, that well, what's going to happen? Are they going to actually be shamed or are their parents and their community going to reinforce it and create uh, like them as martyrs? Like, yeah, you did a good job. And you know what? What you're seeing right now, that's just a pushback from like the, you know, whatever, you know, bullshit they might believe. Right. Like, are you going to see them actually learn from their mistakes or their parents pat them on the back? You know, the same people who let all of these incidents transgress up until this point. Or are they just going to, like, pat them on the back and be like, yeah, no, nah, don't listen to the rest of the world. Like, we're your family. We're your community. We love you. Because you I, pointed I, out yourself, it's 78% white. Like, are they actually going to take that? I, I do actually believe in the effect of the, the broader social culture because especially the youthful want to partake. They don't want to stay home with Ma and Pa. They want to go out where it's fun, with where it's happening. And that's why you you see culture change every generation you see the the boundaries get flexed ever so slightly and you need that exposure in order to get that right um there's there's so many different examples of this um now i can't say it's one to one oh yeah every single person who has this done will therefore reform i'm not even necessarily advocating that this is what we should do i was just positing the concept that um social consequence is a natural byproduct of being a social species and behavior is inspired by motivation. So if people are motivated to be liked by their peers and their peers are saying, hey, we reject this behavior, that will in fact, and we have data, like do I need to go get the data that shows that this impacts how people behave? I'm not saying that is what we should do or justifies. I'm just putting the truth out there and saying, hey, up. part of the equation. Their peers might just be okay with this shit. Yeah, They're like coming, that, that's what I'm is, saying. Like, <laughs> we, like we for example, that, like, by like the way. What, one way to fix these communities is to teach about race and actually be critical <laughs> and teach the theory and then not only and then um that's banned <laughs> their senate agreed upon it their house agreed upon it so it's like culturally I mean, or, or, or communally a uh, community wise this shit ain't looking like that is it, 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 it to be honest punishing these kids harshly might actually cause this majority of white folks to like you're just gonna create martyrs that's all you're gonna you're gonna it? create child martyrs no, you're when assuming we, when we, you're assuming this no when we no, no, when we talk about what happens online when like people do like minor shit right and what these kids did was not minor right imagine that being blasted on twitter with their names and shit right like that social pushback yeah a lot of people are going to take this a lot of conservative platforms are going to look at this people and be like hey, look at what those little girls are doing for yeah but we're talking about children now everyone fucking loves children children get shamed for much less and we laugh at it it's called americans oh. um, was it the americans videos where they do the stupidest I, stuff but like well, well, when they like as he when they go when they go on America's home videos, right, and they like hit themselves in the nards with like a baseball bat, are they getting death threats and like hate mail basically? Well, look, I, I don't, I really, it's not You're of my here. concern. It's not of my concern what they get afterwards. I'm talking about the result for the greater. Well, uh, exactly. We, and, that, and that's what I'm talking about. If, well, good. 
if a lot of people if a lot of people look at this as and they see that these children are getting death threats and hate they may not necessarily look into the deeper fucking story and be like oh yeah these kids held a fucking slave auction on twitter they might just see kids getting death threats and fucking hate and because they're children and people have a natural predilection towards children like yo um no we're not okay with children being treated like this i'm worried and this is just my worry that like if we implement this type of thing the result may not be as wholesome as we, we are what are you talking about? We already Not do. To the extent that you motherfuckers are talking about, I don't really see like death threats and harassment. Nay, I don't care. As a, what are you claiming that we already do that we shame children? As he finishes because yeah, we can't. Listen, you didn't. Did you not just hear truth? Did you not just hear truth talk about the things we already do? I want a name. I'm not asking them to stand on the side and say I'm a I, I'm a a a, 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 a internet bully. I don't, I'm not even asking for that much. I don't you even know who these guys are. Hold on, bro. I don't even know who these guys are. They're, they're what are gonna you going to do with that information once you do? I'm probably not going to do anything, but I know who the people are who have been. I know who the victims are. I know who the people who are uh, illegitimately sent to to uh to uh juvenile hall are i know those names i know the names of everybody who dies i know that i know the names of people who are unjustly who are unjustly met with shame i know the people who are met with shame who for a lot less so why I mean, are we trying so hard wait, now why are we trying happens. so hard now we're trying so hard to protect the kids now when all those rest of those kids who who've done a lot less and this were shamed a, for in a much greater extent so we're are trying we, to protect ironic, these kids are we unironic Doing what about the kids who were shamed for less? Because right? they, 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 these people made jokes about some of the most egregious things in history. See, no, I, I would understand I it was agree, something no, less. I agree with this you. This is one of the egregious Let him finish. His obviously, point. Uh, obviously not because we're oh, we're trying so hard to try to say like, hey, we, we we're we're trying to. This isn't a legal thing. This isn't a social thing. We're trying to protect these children who've done you no. Know, well, let's think of their futures. Come, some of these kids don't have futures, man. I want a name. But, Wait That's up. all I'm asking for. I, I'm going to have to be honest here. I don't care about their future to an extent. Right? I really don't care. I, I, I care about their safety. I care. So I personally would like this type of shit to be on their permanent record. So when institutions, permanent. when, when universities want to uh, decide which students they take in, they should be able to see this. Uh, these <laughs> communities don't give a damn, right? Obviously, d due to the amount of racism that's happening in their community. Now, what do they do care about? Is their precious racist children getting into the best universities? Uh, we should do something about that. And it, it, there's so and many, happens, there's so many amazing the individuals. There's so many amazing kids. Like there's no shortage of kids when it comes to getting into these institutions. You deny, no lie. If you were to deny 300,000 racist kids from being able to go to college, that's just 300,000 seats for everyone else. There's plenty of applicants. Very little schools have an acceptance rates of 100% besides community colleges, right? State colleges. So at the same time, let them take the racist kids. And, but, and uh, all the good but, actors, all the good actors who get them left out. In any way for them to be targeted with physical harm, nah, this rule them out of certain opportunities. I'm saying it now. Uh, they can go to community college. They can um, do some community service and, uh, and, and, and fix their reputation and, and use that to app apply to institutions along with their transcripts and hope for the best. Okay. Like, uh, I, I don't Why understand we... the sentiments, honestly. No, I really don't. No, like, no, I kind of do, because like you want these kids borderline docs. And yeah, no, like I, 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 I agree with you, Azzy, and that's why I'm saying what I'm saying, right? This isn't some trivial, like, oh, I just made fun of your shirt or your Captain Planet aesthetic, right? This is some legitimate You do it all shit. the time. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. I, I do it all the time. But what these kids did, like you said, is a legitimate, holy fucking shit. Why would you do this? Like, we're talking about shit that is like really fucking it's like a scar in american history that we still haven't healed over yet these kids Even are just joking the about it. What we should know. no we i don't think we, the, I, I don't we think that no hold on can i finish now like yeah, i don't think finish. that i don't think that information about who these children are especially if there's not going to be any charges pressed other than like expulsion because they did something so fucking serious and because they are children like we act like we don't know when th what happens when this shit happens remember that kid that smiled at a native american during a protest and like the situation was looked at kind of fuzzy and like yeah he got a lot of support dude made a lot of fucking money off that it backfired i don't want to see it backfire again I think, it's not listen i think that's public record is public information we can we can look up public record 
if their name is out there in 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 a in a, in a presence where a school can prevent them of uh, acceptance, it's public information. That's and what like, I'm so asking. I, 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 I think, fanatic, I think all right, hold up, like Tyrone, me, like, very interesting point there. Talking about uh, these kids being effectively martyred, right? Going back to that Native American situation, it was in Washington D.C. A bunch of white kids surrounded like this. These Native American people were like drumming or something. It was a, a whole mess, right? The whole situation was a fucking mess. In which way, this one guy was like caught smiling at the at the um, at this Native American uh, saw person. That, saw that and video. It it seemed like it was an attempt to like intimidate him. It was I don't know. It was a mess. But in any case, right? Uh, that kid ends up suing. I think CNN or something. I, I think he su- sues the news media, and uh, for the way he was portrayed. Um, I could be wrong about that, but he sued someone, um, and he became like this like right wing martyr, right? So we want these kids to have that opportunity because it's going to happen, right? Someone in the right wing is going to pretend like these kids, that these kids are going to be uh, be persecuted, right? These are the persecuted ones, the ones who are running the online uh, the social media slave auction. They're the ones who are, who are persecuted, and so um, maybe just simply keep them out of uh, out of the spotlight. It would happen regardless. It would. It would happen regardless. Would happen regardless. They would become a hero. They become the hero who was wasn't caught, or they become the martyr who was caught. No, like, no, that's not how martyrdom works, dude. Like I said, they be... become the hero who wasn't caught. Like now, why the rest would you, of us glo- why why would you glorify oh, someone who wasn't not caught if everyone's the, doing it? We're not glorifying them. Oh, the, the, the the wrongdoers, the right, the alt right. Insane asylum individuals are, are gonna I mean, glorify it them. The, well, caught. hold on. The problem they, they is like, the, caught, hold on, hold on. Yeah, right. the problem is like, up until they got caught, this was just the norm in this community. They got caught, and that's why we're talking about this now. Now we need to talk about what we want to do afterwards. Do we want to make these kids' names public and potentially lead to martyrdom of them, or do we want to like maybe you know keep it on a download because they're children and shit? And like Mr. Fanatic said, um, a lot of this shit isn't public record. When we talk about the legality of these shits, like he said before, uh, a lot of these child cases are closed for this very reason i'm not sure how it goes about expulsions in school if you want to put that in the public uh not the public record but their school record i'm okay with that but to make it public record i don't know about that school record is no listen so we're not we're not necessarily talking so the what's what if i remember exactly what spiked this off was simply i said that and I think almost verbatim, I said, I'm not necessarily advocating that their names do get out, but if their names get out, I'm not losing any sleep over that. I don't really care. That That's really what, like, and so I don't think anyone yet has advocated, well, no, as the on one was like, oh, we want the names. <laughs> but other than that, like, I don't think anyone's really been advocating as a, an actual punishment of these children. Like, yes, get us, no. get us. So sorry, sorry. No. Let, let, let let Chris in. After, sorry, uh, excuse me. Uh, let um, um, cut sleep in. I apologize. Let me mute because I'm getting excited. Well, wait. Now? Do yeah. I go now? Okay. Okay. Um, specifically going back a while. Um, when we compare shaming of like someone getting like hit on like America's Funniest Kids, and the shaming of like uh doing something bad on the internet, there's two types of shaming to be in consideration of. Negative shaming and positive shaming. When you're shaming someone for doing a bad act or shaming someone because something is funny, it's the difference in the distinction between laughing at someone and laughing with someone. Now, when we talk about retribution and posting the internet names online, we have to know that these two things coincide with each other. If we want to post the names online, that's going to get in the way of retribution. So, as soon as you post these kids online, there's no hope, no chance for retribution. And that's going to be a sacrifice that you guys would have to be willing and comfortable to bite the bullet on if you want um, these kids' names uh, posted. Yeah, cut sleeve, you should read a dictionary. I don't think that's what retribution means. Um, but um, yeah, no, I don't think that like, oh my God. The, the whole point, the, whole, the court system has figured this out. The whole point that courts like seal children's records and don't allow them. I don't I think they're not allowed to be published in newspapers either, but I'm not sure if they are. It's like without names. Um, The whole reason we do this is because children. Right. Um, Actually, it's people up to like the age of 26 when your prefrontal cortex stops um, forming. But children under 18 in the eyes of the law um, are seen as not being able to understand the long term ramifications 
of like their immediate actions and like all the things that like Azzy and be more are like advocating for are like long-term consequences right these are the consequences that these children aren't supposed to be able to understand right the whole reason that they're children because their prefrontal cortexes aren't completely formed like and then the also the idea that like we should keep these kids out of colleges, the most liberal places in the United States, the place where like they might actually learn more about and be exposed to other types of people, um, like cutting them off from like future experiences where they might get to like um like face their like harmful like ideas about the world and like is like really like fucking stupid in my opinion. Be more. First off, all I want is disclosure. Uh these universities can choose to decide if they want them or not. Uh, also, if anything, they just probably need to make their applications a little stronger. They need to go out there. They need to do some communal efforts and and, and fix their damn reputation. Uh, schools could still admit them if they wanted to. Like, in no way am I saying that like, this school is forced not to take you due to your record. I'm simply saying schools need to be made aware of your record. That's it. All right. Go ahead, Fanatic. Amazing point. Just really eloquent. What well, I expect. We about ten people. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, like I wanted to address this when you made it the first time. Be more. When when you're expelled from a school, it's automatically put on your on your school record. They, they, I'm speaking about expulsion, right? I'm speaking about this case specifically. Like this, the the, the fact wait, that disciplinary wait. action was necessary. Like what that. Kind of record? Then? You're saying like a criminal record? No, not necessarily. But the the no, trouble that they this time, hate crimes being put on their record. They the apply for schools. Crime. This isn't a hate crime. Racial cyber discrimination, bullying. cyber bullying, things like this. Well, cyber want, bullying like, so based on racial actual discrimination. Actual. It, sounds to me, it sounds to me like you're asking for some sort of like random, like arbitrary third kind of a uh, record of sorts, right? So you're not talking about their like school records. You're not talking about. It have to be arbitrary. Record. Like we, we now you want find it. Social, you want some brand new social record erected for children, so that way this isn't brand new. This isn't brand new. The college admission. This, so this could this technically is their, this go is their on school some sort. Like schools have like a disciplinary thing. record. Now, do colleges look at these? I don't know. Yes. Maybe. Yes. The answer is yes. No. The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Like we don't have to arbitrary. We don't have to arbitrate that. Like I mean, we don't have to make it arbitrary. It's absolutely yes. Colleges look at your disciplinary records. They look at your GPA, and then they look at like uh, whether that the expulsion and things will be on your disciplinary record. Record. So yes, they will. That that's what they will have. So if, uh, but again, you're talking. But Bimore is now saying that he doesn't. He doesn't care about it being an expulsion. He wants something new. What's this new thing? What? what, what I have, like, no, I just want to ensure. That there's transparency, at least to know that people know, like this has been put on their record. Like this, this well, institutions, universities that they apply to will be no notified during the process of sending off their transcripts. That's it. So, uh, I get you. So uh, and schools, school if schools want to, what's up? Say it again. So, 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 so uh, what we've to been ensure saying already, that this is included in their school record and that yeah, that that's is, fine. So it will and be. that and that yeah. alone is told like uh, that, uh, enough transparency for the community to know that that's going to be added into their record. Sure. So, okay. So then, yeah, that, 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 uh, any sort of punishment or disciplinary action. So here's the thing, sure. fanatic. At this current moment, we don't fucking know if that's going to stay on their record. We don't know if it's going to be expunged. So once sealed. it's on there, you don't know. You don't no. expunge things from school from school records. That no, that's, that's schools, can whatever, schools can do whatever. Schools can do whatever point they, they want. First off, we don't even know what they did because that's the whole part. That's the whole point of there being no transparency. We don't know what the fuck's on their record. It could be a simple. They could just mark insubordination. That's, that's not the, 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 you're just speaking from your anus. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. We not, don't know yes, what the fuck they did to those kids. We do know what we do know is that we know what they did to those kids. Let me finish the statement so then I can educate you. You and then talk back, okay? It, Lord have mercy. It, of so all, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I know, of all people. The way school records... So wait, are you Jesus. telling me you know... Well, so sorry, sorry, let me finish, finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Oh, hold on, Damon. Oh, freaking mercy. How much are you going to do this? No, I'm getting you mad. It's funny. Oh, my God. The, the way school records work is such that once a, a disciplinary action goes on your record, then mm -hmm. it's there permanently. Now, what they can do is they can they can maybe go back and like amend it and say, hey, we're uh, we, we were wrong here or whatever. But the, the everything added to your school record is there. I had to have mine printed out when I was in junior high. Um, furthermore, I know people who had um, pretty extensive records. One of my siblings in high school. Um, those things are still always there. Um, when you apply for a school, that goes to them. They ask for your transcripts. They find out what school you went to, and they get and they get all of that information. They get your attendance records. They get literally uh -huh. all all pieces of that information. Now, 
as it stands right now, we don't know specifically if they've been disciplined. If and and and, and the, the generic idea that they have been disciplined by the school and whether or not it has been added to their record, that's something I would be I would be okay with. That's fine. That's half of my that point. Information. Okay. That's not was that wasn't your first your point. You've been moving your goalposts. I said no. Over I said that's half of my point. You've been moving the no. over and over again because no. at the very no, beginning you, know, you were saying you didn't care about school. Listen, listen, you listen, 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 okay. Then you also said you didn't care about criminal. So every time I keep moving around trying to chase you down so, to get to the point, you're literally running from it the entire time. The I, no, I, I no, no, you're not the listening. Is, you're not listening. What you oh, didn't no, no. know. The fact is that what you didn't know is that yes, if it goes on their record, it will be there permanently. You don't have to keep on posturing about that. Furthermore, Top Dolphin, you were wrong when he said the idea about uh, rest, uh, what do you say? The, the word uh, re retribution. retribution. You said, oh, you need a dictionary. Like what, what Cutsleeve said was that the retribution would be their names, the, the, the information. That's not what he Wait, said. No, he that said is no, not, that's not what, what Cutsleeve said. said. He that's said that releasing show, their don't names, listen. he said that releasing their names exactly would work against the ideas of retribution. You yes. can go back in the chat, that that's Cutsleeve? exactly what Cutsleeve oh, said. Maybe I'm wrong. Is that what you said, Cutsleeve? What? Yeah, I think the word he meant oh, was rehabilitation. Rehabilitation, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, yeah, well, yeah, I'm, rehabilitation, I'm like, so, yeah, like, so, uh, posting the names online would work against rehabilitation. Okay, okay we understand okay. that. Okay. So, uh, Phil Fanatic, again, we don't know whether or not this crime or crime, this, this action will stay on their record, and let's say it did, we still don't know if they're going to mark it down as a simple case of uh, insubordination or... For profanity we don't know we don't fucking know we don't know why because there's no transparency so like that's something all. i will actually agree with be more on here we don't know what they writ written down and for you to say we do is you talking out of your ass well the only thing i can say is like based on the article like the person who did come out and make a public statement is like yeah they need to take better action I am agreeing with Bimo here. I don't want to know specifically what these kids did or what, like, I want to know, like I said in my opening statement, what the fuck is this school district and this community going to do to prevent this shit from happening again? And every time they don't release something like that, every time they just say, oh, we'll deal with it internally, all that tells me is, like, slap on the wrist. These kids just got detention and they got to walk off scot-free. We don't like, know. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I want to know, like, what steps are these, like, do they have in place for this type of shit? And, like, if they're actually following them. And, like, that's as much transparency as I want when it comes to what the kids then, did. And, like, like I'm agreeing with Beamer. I want it on their school, like, their uh, school record. And that's it. Like, I don't think they should go on their criminal record unless this is a criminal action and they're prosecuted for it. Um, But on their school record, so, like, universities, other school districts and shit can know, I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like, don't, uh, so, as, as the, real quick. Like, what is it? Uh, Doobie brought up a cool point. I think the victims deserve to know. And if the, and the victims want to disclose the information, cool. And Gambit brought up a good point. We don't fucking know what they put down. We don't know what they put down on their record. They put something, right? And we just got to hope for the best. I don't like that. Yeah, so... Yeah, this, so um, that, okay, yeah. I think that's... I, I think that was the, the most interesting point, is that um, we don't... We have no idea in terms of transparency as to what is happening. So we've seen in past situations, we've talked about past situations, right? Um, where there's been some incident and then there's been a slap on the wrist, right? Where it wasn't yep. taken seriously. Like we know this happens and it looked like the school at first wasn't going to take it seriously until there was a backlash. So when they say some disciplinary yeah. action will be taken, we just have to take their word for it that it will be an appropriate action. So if yep. you don't release uh, their names, right? Like just for for the community's sake to, to be reassured that this has been taken seriously. There's actually no way to know that unless you That's happen, true. unless you already happen to know the kids involved. There's no way to know that the kids. Uh, Fine. It's yeah, and okay. this is it's why very, in my opening in my very, opening statement, very easy to go ahead and release information. It's very easy to release what the disciplinary disciplinary actions were without mentioning the people's names. That's what I'm talking about here. Never we can easily release say, their names. Can, that's we not can easily, well, that's what we're talking what, 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 about. Be more. Just stop interrupting, please, so you can actually listen. Yeah, make a good just point then. I, I make good points all the time. If you listen, you actually hear them. I'm going to go ahead and mute you after that. You really won't shut the hell up. Anyway, Prime, the idea is, because you, um, you just made the statement, basically, I don't have to, you, you know what you said. Um, so the idea is, these two things are very different. Like, the public releasing of the information and knowing what the disciplinary actions are are two totally different things. So if the school was to say, 
this has been noted, blah, 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 on their, on their, on their, on their records, yada, 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 yada. Um, and, and they could leave, they could leave specifically who the people were, but say specifically what they're putting on the record. I, I, we've all argued that we want more transparency. We want the transparency. All we can, all we need is just more transparency without actually releasing their names. I'm, I'm just saying, can you say it so I don't have to? <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying as of now, they have not like yeah, what they've agree. said that, what they've actually yeah, said right. okay great no so then one disagrees with okay this. good like, good so, they, so i'm but i'm oh. saying but i'm saying is that um the using i'm saying that if they don't actually do uh, uh release it right they, uh, i don't i think they're hiding behind like the uh the legal barrier the legal barrier um of like oh well, these are kids right the, these are kids and so we can't um uh, we can't release what we've done no matter what so I guess we can all agree, fine, um, that we should have more transparency. It took us a while to do that. Um, but I think, I think yeah. in general, these things uh, are good for protecting perpetrators. That we, I think in other situations, we might say, no, this person uh, should be out in the public, that we should uh, know who they are. Like, they might be a danger to the community right? or for in, in other situations, right? So I, uh, I've, I'm not really for this whole thing of hiding. We typically we typically do that when people do things publicly. For example, when that girl made that video on her TikTok, um, that very racist video, yeah, she got whatever, and all of her all of her she got publicly shamed because she did a public act, and so then as a result of that, she wasn't able to get all of her colleges completely rejected her from her from her school. Like it, it really did upend her life, and I'm perfectly fine with that. You publicly did something, so you there. It's not a matter of like bad sort bad sources doing something to whatever. You did something in, in the public sphere, so you got punished in the public sphere and it had all those ramifications for it but if this thing was done something privately then i think the idea that we would publicly release its information sounds a little bit absurd now again uh, this does not mean that we don't want transparency the transparency can be public we just don't why want why why does it make a difference if it's be public or private isn't yeah, the harm done the, 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 i'm just I'm curious well, so, yeah, what's so the difference the, yeah i got you so so the difference is the reason why if something is publicly done then it seems it stands to reason that the person like was hoping to gain public benefit from this thing and since the action was publicly done already then that means that it's already public we already know the individuals we can already find their tiktok and typically even still the powers that be the schools and whatever are not the ones releasing and the news uh, sources are not the ones re releasing these people's names it's typically like social media because you did something on social media socially you get out it but it's not a matter of like we still keep the same rules and the same president that the people the authorities the powers that be should not be publicly releasing information of children ever for any reason but again we can still get transparency without that and i i would never restrict so, uh you know society it's not something i personally would probably do but i i if other people wanted to do that in society that's their prerogative yeah. I, I disagree yeah. on the on the never uh releasing like things that uh minors have done and that, that's my what would be a good, what would be a good call to do it uh, if they've actually hurt someone, if they've assaulted someone, uh, if they have, um, they need to be put uh, on the registry, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if they killed someone, or if they like, yeah, there's lots of lots of crimes. I don't have to describe them all. Um, that a yeah, a, a, pro, someone, a minor can do. Um, that you know, we already have a president in this country that if someone assaults someone, if a minor assaults someone, then minors was going to go through trial court. I mean, through, uh, through children's court, and that information is not going to be publicly released. That yeah. doesn't mean that the punishment can't be. And you can look up, you can look up to, uh, yeah. So, so you you can look up fi and find out what the punishments were and things like that sometimes. Okay. But, but huh, like finding I'm out, I'm a little confused. What you're trying. I'm look. I'm sorry. I, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying because it, it sounds like you're saying a few contradictory things here. So, um. I'm saying that I think that minors, like, there are certain cases, certain crimes that these minors' uh, information should be released because they could be literally a danger to the public, right? And if I had a child, I wouldn't want them like next to someone who has done something, uh, a few of these terrible types of crimes. Um, you're saying that they can, like, we already have a system in terms of the juvenile court system, right? That um, uh, that is. Un, that that is sealed, but then at the same time, I can know what ha happens within juvenile court. I can look it up. What happens in juvenile it, court? Like I'm a little confused. It, it varies. Sometimes they'll let you know what the punishment was happening, but they will never ever release the identity. And it depends. Like it depends on on on. Mm. Uh, it, I, I think there are different states that will allow for like you to find out for you to be able to follow the follow the information where with all of the names redacted. Like you can. Do so then I so then I don't know. 
then I you don't know the name of the individual. So I'm, yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying I want them. Uh, want these things to be public you're saying that they're not public and we're and the system doesn't allow for it that's where the difference is here you're saying yeah, uh, we I, have already I, a system that does this i'm saying it, we don't have a system that does this no, I'm, saying, I'm wanting a different what system saying, what i was saying is that we have president oh. that clearly says that we shouldn't be releasing the identities of children yeah um, and, you can find out the punishment I know, you shouldn't I'm be finding out their identity. and yeah. I, I know that you disagree with that yeah. but it's really really crazy to oh. me, but I, i'm glad that the rest of the country all recognizes the sensibility can i actually ahead. ask you a question prime uh, real fast oh sorry you can go ahead um, uh, because like I'm not necessarily opposed to the idea of like certain types of crimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to know what the fuck you did, mm -hmm. so I can personally stay as far as possible, as far away as possible. Right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to minors and people like children and shit, what type of like what what what's what would you draw the line at? Right? Like, cause there's shit like you know child bullying shit you can take that as seriously as you want it like cyber bullying we can maybe draw the line there because that does have some like adverse effects but like what would be this line with children where it's like this is a crime where motherfuckers need to know for like the rest of your childhood or the rest of your life you did this uh, you killed someone i think we could start there right well, um, well you, like that, that, like, are we starting assault? with murder? Well, you can, you can start with murder. Why wouldn't you, you start with murder? Line. You're asking for a line. Right. Yeah, okay. We can start with murder. We can go to okay, okay. Uh, sexual... let, 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 let me. Okay, so we can agree can, on murder can I... then? Can we all agree yeah, on murder? Yeah, can I, can, can, can I specify a little bit more? Because, right, because, okay. like, there are the obvious okay. crimes, like murder, rape, no, and shit like that, obvious? where we would obviously. Because it sounds yeah, like now he's saying, and under, he said under no circumstances. I'm not arguing against that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, like, I'm not like addressing Mr. Fanatic's point. Like, I really don't care about them dumb fuck points. Like, I agree with you, like, on the base level. I want to find out, like, where the line is. And maybe I worded the question wrong. Where is, like, the earliest where we draw the line, right? Because, like, I can think of certain crimes where I would say, like, yeah, murder, rape, shit like that. But, like, where would we draw, like, where would be the starting point where this line would be drawn? Uh, I don't know. I don't know all the, the myriad of the crimes. I have to put some thought into that. I don't know. All like, right. That there. We have a floor, Hyper. I mean, Pyro. Like, we have a floor. Like, you know, we started off with murdering and then anything that re results in you being put on a registry. Like, that's a bare minimum start. But mm -hmm. uh, to address Fanatic earlier, because I didn't get to yeah. respond to him, I, I never called for these kids' names to be publicized. I simply wanted, even in my opening statement, I said, we need transparency for consistency. And consistency is not for, like, uh, dropping names for consistency? No. Knowing punishments for consistency. Like, like that's it. So it's like, I don't even know who he was arguing against. Okay. All right. So um, go ahead, Chris. Uh, I want to say the fanatic, he actually kind of swayed me. And to be honest, he swayed me to a position I kind of already had. He kind of checked me and reminded me of a position. This idea that, okay, we got to protect minors and two wrongs don't make a right, right? Like mm -hmm. the idea that we're probably going to go out of our way to try to protect black minors so we can't like go out of our way to prosecute white minors when we see them victimizing black students. Um, and it kind of brought to mind why you don't let the victim of a crime get on the jury. <laughs> so um, I see his point. Um, that being said, um, I do find what they committed to be cyberbullying. Um, it's a juvie record, so it should it should be um, sealed. Um, so we would never get to find out about it. Um, so I think that that is the only real logical conclusion of it um, from I, I see his point there. Um, that being said, I still agree. I mean, I agree. Well, I still have the same sentiment that if their names got out, I wouldn't care. Um, but I again, just we shouldn't have a, a legal apparatus that would push their name out. And we should have a, a news media uh, structure that would protect their identities as well. I'm just saying on a social level. Um, I don't think I don't think everything's always so black and white morally. I think sometimes there's a bit of gray there. And um, however, someone uh, in chat, I, mean, I think she's been on panel before. Amanda brought up a very good link that um, kind of corrected my uh, my perspective on that a bit. Uh, it was a link to a psych psychological study that kind of revealed the difference between shame versus guilt. Essentially, concluding that guilt can actually affect behavioral change, but shame cannot. So it's not enough to shame someone. You actually have to empathize with them enough so that they, and this is intuitive. So, you know, this shows that I was being so hard-headed about it. But you have to empathize with somebody enough to open up their own um, thinking towards your empathy, that you have to make them empathetic by being empathetic, and then they can feel guilt. And from the place of guilt, you, you can expect behavioral change. So, Yeah, so, okay, one last thing on this. 
Uh, if we found out, right, somehow, that anything that th these kids are punished with anything less than expulsion, would you be satisfied? Like, and that can include suspension or... I mean, like, personally, whatever. I yeah. don't understand why, like, this is something that st I still don't understand to these day. Unless the, pr I guess, like, maybe, like, I kind of get it, but I don't get why we expel kids from school. Like, the idea is that, like, we have this place where, like, children should learn, right? And the, uh, if they do something bad at school, right, we stop them from learning, we kick them out, and then we tell them they have to go learn somewhere else and just shift the problem somewhere else, which seems kind of silly to me. Like, maybe if they got, like, something better, it would be, like, they got removed from classes and they had to go to, like, 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 I know, like, there's a girl in my school who had to go to, like, after hours classes. And she had to like work one on one with teachers and stuff like that. And she wasn't allowed to go to the school building. Um, but like kicking the kid out of the district and saying, this isn't my problem. Isn't like the type of solution that I'm interested in. I would like, and like to, to, to be honest, like um, I, I just want to see that this district one punishes the children and two takes actions, like dedicated actions as a district to like fight racism in their schools. And um, yeah, and saying that the transparency isn't there isn't necessarily true. Um, for example, now if they do nothing, then may, then then may, I guess they're not going to publish that. But they have like I went to the school board, the school district's um website. All of their like board of education meetings are vi video public, and the the minutes are present public on websites. Like one. This is like an article. The article might not have what happened in it, but the article's from April 23rd. Um, and like, like the article doesn't get, the articles don't always get updated. So we can't say that like this district took, took no steps and didn't make steps public. Um, wait, I don't, wait, wait, really quick topped off in like a board of education meeting and like a disciplinary meeting are two totally different things. Where, where is the board of education? Well, yeah. So like, so one, minutes, like this, yeah, no, I agree with this. you. Um, so like, but like a board of education meeting is where they would have like any, like, like transparency to what like steps they're taking and on like a district wide level, like, um, definitely not correct. like a, what happened to these individual students level. Um, where, where would they that, release that? They might talk about it at a board of education meeting, um, like how these students are disciplined, but I don't know like how they would necessarily release this data. Maybe they should work with the press and put it out there, but just because yeah. like Fox didn't come up and like make this public doesn't mean that they haven't. So sure. talk I also want to say one more thing. No, go ahead. Oh, oh I was going to say. Oh, oh fanatic. No, you can, you can. Fanatic. All right, well, it's, it's this. Um, the reason why, like, very often that you'll have, like, children go to alternative schools, it makes all the sense in the world when you really think about it. Because educators are typically supposed to be able to take care of the children who are, like, the average child. But if you have children who are, like, too disabled or too problematic such that um, it's going to be too much of a drain of resources from the educators in those cases, then it's now you're harming a bunch of kids by this one kid there because it's drain it's drain on the resources, like literally compromising the educational program and so on and so forth. Furthermore, like if there's like some actors that are too bad, then yeah, you would put them in alternative schools. In my case, um, sometimes the alternative school was literally the school very next door. But in those schools, you had teachers, um, like you had educators um, that were a lot more concentrated and focused and aware um, and trained specifically on dealing with problematic children, children who had like disciplinary issues and and uh, sometimes crack, uh, crack, uh, whatever, uh, uh, children like with learning disabilities and so on and so forth, um, or, or other impediments, right? So the problems, idea, yeah. right, right. So the idea is typically. Um, it, it does make sense to some degree. Furthermore, I think it also serves as, an, as another bonus. Um, when these schools are missing out on a lot of different programs and things like that, which can sometimes serve as an incentive for children to be able to get themselves back into the normal education system so that they have access to like um, sports and uh, other extracurricular activities. Um, f and then the other thing is in cases where it's not particularly convenient, when it's not next door, because it's not always that way. Um, in those cases, then it does put a strain on the parents. Um, so now at this point, the child, child doesn't have access to freaking prom and all these other things so it incentivizes the parents to be, actually get involved with the children furthermore they have to drive these kids there a lot of times when you go to alternative schooling um 
the school bus doesn't go there. So it's not like you can you can put your kid on the bus with everyone else. So now that means the parents are inconvenienced when it comes to picking their kids up, when it comes to dropping their kids off, which means now it forces and incentivizes them to be invested in the children's education. So there's all of these advantages when it comes to removing children, particularly yeah, problem but, children from these things. So my, my issue with expulsion is necessarily, I'm like, so I basically said that I'm okay with like everything you just said. But my issue with expulsion is generally it's like, the school says, yo, not my problem, and, like, drops the kid. And then, like, it's on the parents or whoever else, parents who probably aren't doing a good job already, to, like, pick up the ball again. Like, I would be cool if they were like, all right, you aren't allowed on school campus. You're not allowed at school events. Or, or if they were, uh, and you're going to go to, like, alternative schooling. Maybe we don't have the resources, and we can do, like, a school transfer and move these kids somewhere else. But, like, expulsion is generally, like, hey, we're going to like drop these kids and like, they're going to have to go somewhere else. And like, we're not going to deal with this problem. Um, which is but it's like, only for a really severe problems, right? Like things that the school is not, shouldn't be equipped to deal with. Like, I don't think we should be tr training all of our educators on how to deal with uh, specific behavioral problems. Like that's not their job. Their job should be to educate. And if there's an outlier kid that happens to be so um, unregenerate, then it makes the sense that we would probably say, let's put this child in a program that would be wait, more equipped. So we don't them. have to train educators, but like they're like, even if it doesn't exist, they're the districts, right? Like at, like a administrative level should have systems in place for this right they do so like they do so like, like maybe you can like own me right now because i don't know but like when you expel a kid from school you don't have to guarantee that that kid goes to another school right you don't have to guarantee that, like everything yes. falls on the parents basically right no no within the country all children have to have access to school so these alternative schools are still like generally within the same like 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 relative area they're still gonna have to be zoned there the, the country still has to give education that's a federal law no state can create any law that says well we're just, we're done educating a kid but what they what, what they're required to do is now have an alternative school which has separate like whatever it was like just in a separate institution altogether and they're required to put those kids in those kind of schools you can't just have if if a child if they gotten got kicked out of a specific school and then just didn't go to school at all then the state would literally charge the parents with abuse and neglect because if you don't have your child in education they are neglected at that point it's literally federal law so like it's not like we're done with you and you're just not going to do anything we're done with you and you're going to go to this alternative school they're alternative schools like it's not, it's yeah. not just but do, uh, do school. Do, uh, so my, I guess, I guess, maybe, like I said, you know, I might be wrong, but do like schools provide this resource and like help with this transition to getting a student into an alternative school? Or is it just kind of like, hey, parents, like get your kid in school and then like, kind of hope for the best? I, I I don't I don't know the, the, the full process intimately. Um I I just know that two of my siblings went to alternative schools at, at one one portion. I know my mother my mother was just heavily involved with our schooling altogether as it was. Um so from my experience, then I would know that yes, like as soon as they were like being removed from one school, my mother was involved in getting them involved in the next, but I don't know that process completely intimately. But I do know for a fact that there are alternative schools literally everywhere. If if your kid is messed up, then they will have to go to an alternative school. And and that's still going to be funded by the state, right? Like because all schools are funded. Yeah. So so it's it's there it's there's an alternative. It's not like you okay. just left it away. Okay, so let's move along. All right. Um so uh Pyro, um and then I want to hear from the rest um, of you guys. Would you be happy um if there's anything less than expulsion? Uh but let's like move it along. So when it comes to like this specific the case, uh, I think Cutsleaf said it like really early at the beginning, right? Like this school, these district, uh, this district specifically already has shit in place when it comes to like cyberbullying and shit. Um, we're like, yeah, no tolerance. You do get expelled. Um, because like I did like the conversation Mr. Fanatic and Top Dolphin were having, because like there is a lot of problems when it comes to like the education system in general and how we deal with uh you know problem students and whatnot. Do you expel them? Like how do you make sure they get their education? Without talking about that too much, um yeah the school has a precedent right. Like you got to follow that fucking precedent no matter who it is. Um but if we're gonna talk about like how we can make sure these students still get an education and shit, one thing I would be in favor of is like you tell them outright like you can't come back for the rest of the year but summer school you, you yeah you got to come in for summer school 
because like summer school is something where, uh, you know, at least in my area, right, like I went to the same exact building. It wasn't really hard for my parents to find transportation because it was just like a normal part of the year. You just wake me up early, right? Like, yeah, if these kids are a problem and like if they don't want to actually expel them, tell them like, yeah, you can't come back to this school during the school year. You make a certain part of our uh, population, our student population feel unsafe and unwanted. Um, you're going to have to come back during summer school and try and make up a lot of these classes. But then we get into a lot of problems with like reforming the education system so they can during summer yeah. school. Okay. But like that's the problem. Okay. We need to reform the education system so sure. they can actually sure. up with their education. Sure. Right, All right. So, uh, Asi, what do you think? Anything less than that? Well, I already, I already prescribed suspension. I, 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 pres I prescribed that. Uh, see, I, I feel like just people just heard the fact that I said I want to know the names over the fact that I already said. They don't have to be they don't have to be expelled, but there should be some type of there should be some type of punishment to make sure that these kids are held accountable and uh, and then and, and and go through that process of guilt and conviction. OK, so you're saying and, suspension. All right. Uh, be more. Ideally, these kids need more support to get them out of this. But unfortunately, Texas is the type of state that's going out of their way to stop the level of training necessary to get these kids on the right exactly. track. But um, still, you know, uh, I have no issue with, uh, I know some people in chat had an issue with it, but I think this is the type of information that universities should make sure, like we need to know exactly what the schools see. Doesn't mean we need to know the names. We need to see what is on their record, not who record it's on. But um, yeah, that's all I got. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's go to Cutsleaf. Check him. Cutsleaf? Oh my god. What's going on with your mic? Why does it take you like 20 oh. seconds every time? Is that the US? Just 20. put the USB mic on the. Cool. Yeah, we can hear you You're now. Good. Right, but like it takes well, you too long. Is, oh my um, god. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, is it, um, if I keep my mic on and other people talk, um, it's gonna echo, so I have okay. to like unmute every single time. Um, specifically on this topic, um, it was outlined in the David uh David Doctrine that they passed in 2017, and I think they got it completely right. Um, if they file this under cyberbullying, the uh crime is expulsion. But since it's not a criminal offense, I don't think the uh, names of the people who've done this thing should be released. Yeah, okay, great. So, uh, truth. Um. Anything less than expulsion, mm -hmm. would I be happy? Hell, hell, hell. Fuck. Expulsion to me is the baseline. I feel like they committed a crime and they should go through the judicial system. I don't think that they should like have like the prosecutor try to murder them. Obviously, they're going to go through the system. They'll get pled down. They'll get a slap on the wrist. But they just need to be shocked because what they did was a crime. I think cyberbullying is a real thing. Like it's It's actually really toxic to be going around you know, doing what they did. So uh, of any race, of any conditions, like we shouldn't encourage that. Gotcha. All right, moving on. Uh, so thank you. Thanks for all for that. Um, that was an interesting talk. Moving on to topic two. Well, like, I didn't give, I didn't give a closing statement on that. What are we doing? I thought you did. I asked you. We have less than expulsion, but all right. You want I, I don't remember answering that. We don't well, really well, do closing I, statements like that. <laughs> we just kind I of. Closing statement, but I never answered that question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, for, for, first off, I wanted to say really quickly that this is absolutely not cyberbullying. Cyberbullying means needs to be harassment of some kind. They weren't harassing people. It just like me oh making a text goodness. message group with my buddies. Wait, um, and, and, and talk, let me let me finish my point, please. Can you not just interrupt automatically? So yeah, when I send like if, if me and my buddies like have a group chat in which we talk trash about people, that's not cyberbullying. In order for it to be cyberbullying, I would need to be harassing other people. That means I need to be uh, sending messages such that they would be able to receive, such that it would like uh, hurt them or harm them. Unless I'm doing something publicly, then it's not cyberbullying just by definition because i if, if the people that i'm talking about aren't privy to it then i can't be possibly bullying them um unless well, of course you're posting it publicly then at that point then it would be harassment on their person but this is like what was happening what's up um so specifically um i know you applied these laws to cyberbullying but do you apply these laws to actually bullying so if i'm like a uh, crap talking to the person behind their back would you consider that bullying yes Okay, so, so what, you, what is this? What so, what is this? 
But so so specifically, what's the distinction you make between talking behind someone's back uh, in real life? Then it, it, on, be, it depends on it depends on where it's happening. Like if I'm talking trash behind someone's back, like like in public at school, at like that like with associates of the per, per person or people that like are interacting with the person in some way, shape, or form, then at that point it becomes bullying. But if I'm talking trash like in my text messages to my best friend, no, I'm not bullying the person. The person the person's no, not no, aware of it. More than that, this was oh a great chat. Sure, I, I, exactly. Well, in the same sense as I'm pointing out, I'm, look, 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 I'm sorry, I'm not arguing my opinion here. Let me just, I'm arguing the law. It is not cyberbullying to send text messages between your buddy or group chat about people. It only becomes cyberbullying once you send messages to people that they can become privy to. Now, if they added the individuals to the group in which these messages were happening, by definition, it would be cyberbullying. Since that's not what's happening, this is not cyberbullying, so they can't get expelled. I, I don't even, I, like the fact that it was just something done by individuals, unless it was done on school grounds, the idea of, of expulsion actually sounds well, really I, I ridiculous. Think go, I think that goes into like the argument of transparency again because like we don't know the extent of these groups we don't know if it was just like that private group between a bunch of like high school buddies or whether it was like yo fuck it we're gonna add everyone in the school on the snapchat so they can see this like we don't have that information if they did that then that would be cyberbullying but that's not what it sounded like it was like what made out in the article it's, it's the criteria for cyberbullying legally simply which is actually very loose spreading lies or posting embarrassing photos about someone on social media uh sending hurtful messages or it threats a, and uh, impersonating or sending me messages to people uh, on others' behalf. So boom, essentially, boom, 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 boom. Group, no, so, so no, neither of those things happen. One, if, oh, if I'm DMing, no, no, it, it's not. If I'm DMing people, I'm not posting it. DMing and posting are two totally different no, things. No, so that, me and my private snap, so me and my private snap, it's not that. So that's well, not I what's happening. This, that's a distinction without a difference. That's semantics, right? Because if you think it's about not. how. No, no, hear me out, hear me out. If you think about how Legally, I hope you get your way, but you're wrong. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. If you think about how versatile the internet is and apps, you can't expect legal framework to, it's about, that's why in court they actually call it the spirit of the law, right? The spirit of the law is not accurately defined by its exact word choice. They're talking about the idea that you are propagating media that is negative. And a group chat that anyone with an invite, we have no idea who's been invited to it. We don't know if there were teacher students. Imagine if your teacher's son who attends the school is laughing in these chats. Like it's we one person sending it to one other person, cyberbullying. Already. Already. Because you're I'm you're putting it's not a text message. message. It's a group chat that anyone who gets the invite can get access to. You're making it public. I mean then then it and, and, and even more so he can't even hear me. Law sides with me oh on this one. It's not in, in order for something to be posted, it can't be a DM. A DM is not a post. Those things are very meaningfully distinguished what in the law. It's not cyberbullying. It's not harassing someone to do something mm -hmm. privately with one of with, with other individuals. Now, if this group becomes so big, such that that a, a large amount of people are added to the group, then at that point it would start to become harassment. Once you can say a great number of these people's peers, oh, a great number. A, Right. Did he of course, not these read the article? Are, this, this is, this is, yeah, I, I know. A... Unfortunately, unfortunately for you guys, these things are going to be arbitrarily defined. But fortunately for me, harassment is, we know what harassment is, and private messages aren't considered harassment unless the private messages are to the How do you get yourself in a gotcha? How do you get your own self in a gotcha? What? Azzy, Azzy, I got it right here. I just Googled, because I was curious, because he, he brings up a great point, but it's I actually when to get, I Googled group chat cyberbullying. Um, there's tons of links that are saying this is the new form of cyberbullying, and it's it's one of the new major threats that, and it's the major fear that kids have. The fear that they have is that they will be in some group chat while people are sitting there passing around their information, making fun of them. And it's like I, I, it's, it's, it's fear, but it's not legally. So that we're talking. What? No, here. because it's the very fact that it was no, no, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. As he, as he, he's probably not wrong. What I'm saying is that's why I said spirit of the law. No, if yes, we brought exactly. this to the attention of the legislators, I guarantee, I guarantee they'd be on my side. I so that's so, the and I, I don't know the no, 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 these DMs the came here. to light. The, the these DMs the came to light. Harassment needs to be stopped. And unfortunately, DMs are not harassment. That's what the spirit of the so, law is. We already have other, all sorts of laws. So, so, as he, as he, we like, make your point. I was ready to move on from this topic, but major. Make yeah, I'm ready, but why in the world you should have just answered the question instead of talking about this dumb stuff? Because unfortunately, these DMs came to light, so it is now public information. We know about the DMs. It is now public. Therefore, it is can be used, which it was, because right after it became public, flyers were put out talking about the great the great sale of slaves. 
amongst multiple campuses across the district. It's that a form is- of bullying. In the, so not only not only are the original people in, uh, in, indicated or or involved now multiple people are involved or, or who are who are could have been a part of this this I don't understand what fanatic you're trying to do you tr- stop trying to give these kids an out this just because it was a DM listen I'm, I already said that the DMs came to light and then even the experts say that listen it's dehumanizing. Whether I'm going to read the quote, it is dehumanization, whether consciously or unconsciously. That is the purpose for doing it. So the kid thinking of the students in this Snapchat as just slaves is dehumanization and allows the perpetrators to see them and do to them however they want. Does not matter that if it's a DM. It is a form of of, of dehumanization. Yeah, okay. Conscious or unconscious. So I just kind of can I say real, can I say real yeah. quick um, when when we talk about the. When we talk about when Fnatic no, talks no, no, about no, the legality, no, 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 oh, Azzy, no, hold on, hold on. Like, no, when Fnatic talks about the legality of this, he does have a point. That's why earlier in the conversation, I brought up how were these DMs leaked, right? Because that kind of matters. If it was leaked because they added in a bunch of people who necessarily wasn't in on the joke and it wasn't a friend group thing, yeah, it can be considered cyberbullying as these people aren't a part of that friend group. They're, they're like not a part of the DM circle. Might, you know, it was a mistake or whatever, right? But if it was just a small circle of DMs and one of them decided like. Ha ha, I'm gonna post this or like I'm gonna leak this. Is it still cyberbullying? Yes, talking- yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, let's move on. But there's the difference in that. But okay, we'll, we'll we move gotta, on. We'll, yeah, we gotta move on for this topic. Uh, all right, well, yeah, the district called it cyberbullying and harassment. Okay, district Great. called <laughs> okay, it is what it is. We got, we we got it, right we now. got it, we got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. No, man. Oh, no. Stay <laughs> grounded. We just have to agree this. or disagree. It's fine. All right. <laughs> Topic two. Online dating has promised to massively expand the pool of dating partners. But data shows this isn't the case for all demographics. Some demographics face an uphill challenge on these apps where they are less likely to receive a response. Is there any way to change these apps so that racial bias is blunted or is this simply a society problem with no solution? Would minorities be better off with the apps that specifically cater to their groups? Uh, what has been your personal experience on these apps? And credit goes to Mr. Fanatic for being so kind as to um, bring this to my attention. Well, I'll re-bring this to my attention. This is an old article talking about this thing. Uh, but thank you so much for, for bring, uh, bringing up this topic. Why don't we start with Mr. Fanatic? Um... Yeah, I think uh, online dating is what they what they showed was that a lot of the biases that people have are there. And what's happening is very often what we're doing is we're training people on how to speak while not actually eradicating all of the hatred and, and biases in their hearts. And so what it is, is they found that if they poll and ask people specifically, do you think race is an important component? They will all say no. But all of the data shows that these same individuals that they poll are very much um, more in, involved with like wanting and prioritizing their own race. Um, and uh, when it comes to, um, and so that what, they were, what they were able to find is that cognitive bias um, really takes root. Like if you ask someone to stop and think about something, they know what the response should be. But when it comes to fast acting decisions, that these biases are there. So in this case, when it comes to things like Tinder, uh, the swipe is something that happens really quick. You're not supposed to be like taking a long time to think and analyze like, are these double D's or what? Like you just kind of just swipe, right? And so then at that point, you're making these really quick decisions that you're not thinking through. So you're not really confronting any for, for sort of bias there. And I, I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think when it comes to dating, I, I think the answer really does like rely around like actually finding a way of dealing with cognitive bias as opposed to... Uh, like just a lot of the performative things and a lot of the things we do where we're just tell, telling people what they can and can't say and just, you know, castrating people for awkward posts on the internet. Azzy. Uh, this is, is guaranteed. We, we know the, uh, we, we know that the history with these apps are extremely just, in fact, these apps have contributed to less relationships in America. They, there are several TED Talks on relationships. They always contribute to Tinder. Tinder is a problem from jump. It's pay to win. I, I, as soon as I first interacted with it and I found out that I had to pay for likes, I knew this, this, was, 
nope, this was a run, run away, bro. No, this is not how you get real, real relationships going on. And the fact that even now race is a, a factor, which we already knew was a problem. Now we're, we're seeing it even per pervasive in uh, what could be possible relationships. It's, it's not, it's inorganic. And because it's, we're allowing this to happen, we're profiting off our inorganic, our in, inorganic relationships. And now it's hurting us even further. Hi, Rob. Um, yeah, like when I re read the article and I look at issues like these, like I can't help but think about like how many times that like, we've talked about on this panel specifically and like how many other people have talked about like, yeah, a lot of technology and a lot of the way algorithms set up, like just disadvantage a lot of uh, demographics. And, you know, it seems to be the trend that those demographics, you know, aren't white. Right. So um, the two sides of this are like we can go at the society the societal level and try and change the mindset but for me the more immediate action is like how do we get these uh online apps and shit to stop it with the fucking algorithms and shit well, like what coding is going into what internal biases are the programmers putting in where like yeah the algorithm is gonna like uh just automatically do that and like i believe there is something that can be input and i'm no technological expert that's like yeah we can mitigate that like if we input like that sequence of code for like you know xe extinguish racism or whatever like you know maybe mitigate this a little bit because that seems to be a big problem with like just all across technology be more so i know fanatic has some solutions on this so i, I can't wait to hear them but pyro like i don't know right because like when i'm swiping i'm blazing i'm moving quick like lightning speed when i'm making these decisions and so my bias is going to naturally kick in but what i will say is i don't discriminate based on color but my inbox looks like it does because i get responses from predominantly black women and i'm not complaining that's amazing but at the same time like i know something fishy is going on because i live in the area that is phoenix majority is white you know so I make it a point to make sure I like black women because first off I do, but um, so I, I do weigh that weigh that direction myself, but I still swipe a lot for white women or in Hispanic women, and I'll see them as much. I don't know what the fuck. I don't have a concrete opinion on this other than due to my results, something's going on. Cut mm. Steve. Specifically on the question of racial discrimination in dating apps, dating apps aren't responsible for how society views people. If people are subconsciously racist and social media exposes that fact, I don't think it's their fault. I think it's Hollywood's fault that they portray romance in film. In those films, it's always been two white people, and if it, there is a black person there, it's always a girl. There is never a black male in these like romance films. I can list you countless examples of this. Tuck Everlasting, uh, the show You, all the relationships in Breaking Bad are white people, and the only black character in that is single and a supervillain. Jenny and Georgia, Georgia chooses the white person, and both of Jenny's partners are non-black. And Gilmore Girls, all three of Lorelai's boyfriends are white, and all three of Rory's boyfriends are white. There's never been a single example of like a black male in romance films portrayed in like a, a good light. And if there are, those things are a dime of dozen. So I think it's like society's view on how we see a uh, uh, romance or like the what a relationship's supposed to be and how that view uh, internalizes in these dating apps they're not responsible for it it's just a catalyst for how society views romance True. I yield. True. this man is a goat bro get this go ahead cut sleeve you've grown <laughs> Uh, he becoming dangerous, man. I, I don't gotta watch out for cussy. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, Chris. Um, I don't really. Ha I mean, everyone's already said anything I could say really well. The idea that there's subconscious racial biases that people aren't even aware. I mean, that's the only thing I could even touch on really because. I don't know if uh, dating apps are even reflective of the natural dating pool because we don't know who's on dating apps and if that's reflective of an actual racial group at all. So, like for all we know, some certain demographics go to certain apps. There's multiple apps. Yeah, um, I don't know. 
Uh, to the to the latter part of the question, um, would a solution be something, uh, and is it okay to have? I think yeah, a whole black dating app or something to that effect. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I think if any culture or ethnicity wants to cultivate on one dating app, like someone in comments was like, uh, the farmers app. That shit is hilarious. That's a real thing. The the farmers link. So if farmers are linking up. <laughs> then uh, of course black people should link up. Um, I don't think you should want to get with someone who doesn't want you anyway. So I, to me, it's a non-issue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, things moved around, moved around my screen. So uh, topped off, and I believe you're the last one. Yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, so this is like a really interesting issue. Um, I remember reading something about this a long time ago, about like a study okay, Cupid put out, and I wonder if this is the same study. Yeah, um, yeah. There's but, we're talking about yeah. articles. It's an old, it's an old article. Yeah, um, yeah, but it, it talked a lot about how, like, um, like Asian, I mean, Asian men and black women are, like, the least desirable out of all categories, and they just get fucked by dating sites. Um, when it comes to, like, discrimination, um, it, it depends, because the algorithms can work in different ways. Sometimes algorithms can be, like, a reflection of, like, how we view things in societies. Um, I think Tinder's is kind of like this, where it, like, takes less desirable people and puts them with less desirable people and more desirable people with more desirable people. And it like gives you a score based on a lot of different things. Um, but there's other types of algorithms in dating apps, for example. I know OkCupid is one of these where they, they might actually like find characteristics that are common between different groups and then suppress those types of groups. And in cases where the second one's going on, it's absolutely bad and like, uh, if one of those groups is race, then that should be probably be something that's dealt with. Um, but in other cases, when it's a reflection of society, it's a lot harder of an issue to kind of tackle. Um, and I don't know if necessarily like changing algorithms to like maybe boost minorities or something like that would be like a good solution or like the right solution. So uh, I wanted to address something that I guess Fanatic said about um, like the split second nature of swiping one i don't think it is split second for for when people can do like you look at multiple pictures right within tinder you don't you don't have to react within a certain time limit you can take as long as you want so not everyone does i mean you can but not everyone does so it's not necessarily that is the case and then we get this data not from uh tinder um but okay cupid um at which adam was just discussing um they were the ones who, who released that like longitudinal study um, on uh, the behaviors of people in a dating sphere and their service um, isn't uh, uh, at all involved with snap judgments in fact it's like supposed to push against that you, uh, with the okay keep it site uh, you can you know you make a uh, profile supposed to be supposedly detailed profiles and then you can send long messages um, and, and hook, hook up from there uh, so uh, I've uh, had uh, no one well other than be more i'm not sure if anyone else specifically said their talked about their experiences so it's funny that uh oh, fanatic that. brought this up it's funny that fanatic brought it up because i was with a friend the other day and we were just hanging out and i opened up one of my little dating apps I'm, I'm not interested in looking right now but um i just opened it up to show her because she's um uh, uh, because she was thinking about it, right? And it's <laughs> it just like thinking about all those memories of, of dealing uh, with those dating apps, which is wasn't great. <laughs> I remember how uh, exactly like what, what Beemore said is that when it comes to the ones filled with white individuals, it's very, very tough. It's extremely tough to uh, get matches. I, I had better luck on a uh, like, quote unquote black Tinder uh, that apparently shut down. I, I'm just finding out like this week. Um, they, they had shut down. Black people meet? No, not that. It was one, it was okay. called, um, it was called a soul swipe. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, and it was just, go. yeah, it, it worked just like Tinder. And that's where I found all my success when it was just, uh black people right and some white women uh, <laughs> but uh when it was a a, tar a an app targeting african americans that was fine but when it when you're just dealing with the wider 
<laughs> uh, a mostly white population of Tinder. Uh, it's tough going. It's real tough going. Well, one of the things like uh, I was trying to hit out in my opening statement um, and like to rebut to be more a little bit like I understand that. Right. Like I'm not necessarily thinking about race. You know, I might have my preferences or whatever would up swiping. My problem comes from the fact that like um, I'm not sure about okay, Cupid specifically, but like a lot of these dating apps have algorithms where it's not necessarily based on race, but it is based on what a society, like what features a society finds attractive, right? You know, fairer skin, you know, more symmetrical faces, uh, you know, thinner noses and shit like that. Um, so like when we talk about this, it's coming from that societal aspect. That's why I brought up like how they're developed, right? I want to know how these biases are getting into those algorithms because we all know like that's not just the only standard of beauty, right? I, I would hope we all agree with that. But like, why is this the only thing being pushed forward? forward because like well, we can all take a you know we all have our preferences as well not but like for me personally a lot of the times when i'm on these dating sites like despite my preferences like it will just start showing me like the same generic white women or men like over and over and over again it's like i don't like these i recognize they're stereotypically attractive so just right now while you were while while you guys were doing your intros i've got on my tinder and I just swiped left on every Caucasian person and swiped right on all, all the black people. In the beginning, it took me so long before a single black person even came That's to my, my Tinder. Issue. And yeah. then it, it took me a while. And then I was like, okay, it, it didn't matter if it, I was in, into it or not. I just swiped right on every black person. And it took a long time, probably well over 100 swipes before it finally got to a point where I got three black women in a row. And I'm like, oh, hey, they're, they're finally catching on. The problem is, I don't think that the algorithm is necessarily the problem. Black Blacks are like probably the minority on this demographic. And I think enough Black people are becoming aware that the success rate for Black women and Black men also is significantly lower than the rest of the population. So it's discouraging for people to use it. So then that probably contributes to us even using it even less than others. And then on top of that, um, people tend to swipe um, left. So all of these people have these biases. And if you're swiped left on, um, I mean, if, if you're swiped right on, is rejected and swipe right is accepted. Right, 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 just so, right, right, no, right. just so everyone else who doesn't know. Yeah. 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 If, if, if you're swiped right on and enough people do it, then you're considered like a higher commodity. So then the algorithm will put you towards the top. But so since, since, since so many people have anti-black preferences, then that means it almost ensures that black people are less likely to be like um, particularly liked a whole lot. So it's it's it it is a problem. And I think again this is something that has to be done culturally. I don't think that it's a problem with an algorithm. I don't think it's a problem um with, with controlling rhetoric. I think there is too much conscious bias. People automatically assume because you're a black man that you're gonna like this you're gonna do all sorts of stereotypes. Um, and I think that that's 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 where the problem comes in from the from the unconscious biases. They just assume you're automatically going to be a rapper. <laughs> oh my, my, my thing. Um, Go ahead. I don't know. I, I, I can something. I, I can say that Orlando's decent, Atlanta's fire, and Phoenix is terrible. Uh, I can tell you that right now. And then another thing I don't know because I don't know the data is uh, do black women not care about online dating? Maybe I don't know. I don't fucking know. Well, like um, that's the thing. Yeah, like yeah. that's why so I bring up like the algorithm, algorithm so much is because it seems like they're uh, they are there. They're just not being put to the front. And like so? and, yeah, 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 like in like yeah, the yeah, in these yeah, big yeah, population, population cities and like you. this, like we were right. having an yeah, like so like, in these big. In these big population Website? cities, I was going to say, like, yeah, I do think it's a lot of the fact that, like, they're not just put forward. Because, like, for me, it's hard to believe that, like, personally in my city of, like, nearly uh, a million people, like, yeah, the, the majority black population just ain't on these dating sites. Like, it seems to be that they're pushing, you know, some type of features up to the front, whether it's based on, like, a, you know, stereotypical attraction or whatnot, which we all know where that tends to lead or, like, whatever. And that's why I'm coming after the mm -hmm. algorithm so much. Cause like, I do agree it's a societal issue. How long does it take to change societal issues? I'm going to be alive for like, you know, 80 years. Like I want to, you know, date and fuck now. Like I want to change this shit now. <laughs> well, also yeah, if we so, assume, if we assume so someone with good faith, it's, it's like the, the society is majority white. So at the end of the day, it's going to be reflective of that anyway. Go ahead, Katsi. So when it comes to 
black women in particular, they have it tough too. Because like we can look at it and again, it's society's fault because what are the identical uh, characteristics of a princess? Well, a princess has to be a thin person with blue eyes and relatively dependent. And these are none of the uh, like stereotypical traits that black women fall under. They're usually, uh, they're on average bigger than like uh, the average white female they don't usually have blue eyes they typically or, have darker eyes and they're usually in more independent than like even some of us males like these are the like typical traits of like a princess doesn't align with like different types of cultures so like specifically we have to look at what is typical for a princess what's typical for a hero and 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 when when you uh, align these traits you actually don't you actually see why societal makes its movies, why society makes its TV shows based off of like these traits that we typically align to these types of people. Yeah, yeah. so something very interesting what? in how these algorithms work is I don't I'm think a little it lost necessarily... there, sorry. I was a little lost with the I actually talk. understand that minute? point um, damn near. Yeah, yeah can yeah. I steal Mana too after uh, Fnatic? Uh, right. Okay. All right. Be careful though. I mean, yeah. I, I think I, I, I think I generally see just saying that there's, st- I don't know. I just, maybe I, just not the hero talk. I think was, no, it's not important. It's not important. We don't have to focus in on it. Uh, let's, let's just yeah. go to top talk. Yeah. So something really <laughs> interesting about how these like, um, algorithms work, um, from what I understand is they don't necessarily, um, like by, by proxy they may, but they don't necessarily suppress and push like features. Um, at least on Tinder, I know in other ones they might, but in general, what they do is they take individual accounts and like um, how people engage with them and how people engage with uh, and how you engage with other people. So like something that's very interesting is I believe like how long you like spend on a profile determines like how like desirable you are. It's like one of the things, um, and it's like um, I know that like um, in like in this study particularly, I believe like black women. Um, like universally just are seen as like very like no one likes black women apparently uh, except for black men and I think uh, that um, I think that like black men are, aren't like as discriminated against as hard um, and so like it might be just like that like being an African American man the reason you don't see a lot of black women is because black women specifically are suppressed by algorithms while you might not like that might not be the case for you then there, I need you to like not do that, okay? I need you to do the uh, the opposite. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, so, what should be the uh, the remedy here? Like, so, I feel I like people in romance movies get off Tinder. I, I, Tinder. I focus on the romance movies thing. I look. Like, like, I guess you're trying to make a a a wider point about altering society. Right, like okay, great. I no, get that. No, no, hold on. I'm not as he. I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Cutsleeve. I, was like, I don't know, but it, it sounds I'm like you're trying. I'm gonna after you're done. Oh my god. Uh, I I think uh, he you're trying to make a wider point about like altering society and its views, right? Well, as Pyro said, <laughs> who has time for that? Sure, a part of the longer term project, but saying that even if you change. Uh, uh, media now, people's minds are going to change immediately, uh, and it's that's certainly not the only uh, influence uh, affecting their dating uh, choices. So, so staying within like the short to medium term, like what can we do to alter these things? So, uh, is the only solution to do what I did uh, and go to uh, a black focused? A dating app is that your best bet yes yeah I, yeah i um, I, I appreciate the uh, coherency of your argument but i completely disagree um firstly uh i think it's all societal um everything has to do with how society views people i don't think it's like inherently biological i think it's all society and i don't think it has to take in uh, in terms of like generations i think it can take half a decade i feel like the way we uh, view lgbt people in this country shifted majorly during the uh, uh, Obama administration, and a lot of that had to do with Hollywood's representation of these LGBT uh, people, and I feel like if we just put more black people in these, like, uh, not even just romance movies, just, like, in a romantical position, we could change the views of society, uh, society views of black people immediately. And, and, to, oh. I, and I just want to push back on that prime, where we say, should we change societal? At this point, in 2021, 
we can only change so much in terms of dating. I'm for interracial dating, but when it comes to Tinder, Tinder is a marketing scheme. This is not about is uh, like I said, it's 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 very rare that you will get organic relationships from Tinder. People don't listen. We we know what you're going to Tinder for. When you download that app, you know you, you heard your boys talking about it. You know why you get in Tinder. Get no, out wait, of here. Wait, get some I, bullshit. Wait, oh, hold on. Can I offer a bullshit. opinion that's just not nope, anti-Tinder not rhetoric? Like, I am not done. Nope, I am not done. Hey, okay, we we go ahead. Tell us nope, about the joys of like, real life. I already brought up. I could link several TED TED talks where they did the oh, studies TED and they talk. said they said several. These online relationships are leading to less, to lesser and lesser long-lasting relationships, and mm -hmm. they're leading just to more and more one-night stands. And it, and that's not even, and even in those one-night stands, it, it they they amount to there's not a lot of them. S sex is happening less and less in America. That that's so, those um, numbers. Let me like finish. It. Let me finish. Fucking Get, shit. I'm not trying to make you like black women. If you don't intrinsically like black women for the right reasons, that's on you. I'm going to another app. As soon as I got off Tinder, I went to Christian Mingle. I went to Upward. I went to Bumble. Black women out the, out the wazoo, man. Listen, I was getting hits. On Tinder, I was getting the, the French white women and the, you know, the, you know they smoke and... No, I'm like I'm not down oh, in smokers. Lord. I'm not down in smokers, but I specifically oh, said, just gonna ramble. I specifically oh, said no smokers. No, so because like, you don't you don't get what you want on Tinder. You don't you listen. Okay, but that's not the point. That's not. Can I actually no, respond? I, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I respond? Like, because that's not the point. The point isn't like whether or not like you're getting the result right. Like for the question at hand, like how do we make it so like you know you, we can find more of these disenfranchised groups, right? To Prime's question, how do we do this? Take more fucking options, right? Like you got Tinder, you also got like all of these other dating apps. There's also like, as he was pointing out, you can try doing it in public. Don't settle for like the one option because like you will always find your dead end there, right? Secondly, yeah. to cut what? sleeves, <sighs> very Did simply put- the same thing I said? Yeah, but I didn't go on like a 20 minute diatribe about how Tinder's bad, right? Like, okay, I I, I like to fuck, I like Tinder. It, oh, oh my God. I don't even know that Tinder's terrible. Okay, yeah, but like, uh, to hey, cut I enjoyed the fuck out of that. So. Yeah, like, to, to uh, cut Sleeve's point, like, I do understand <laughs> what you're saying about like how society views certain, like, the, the beauty standards and whatnot. And like, I agree with you. We can look at media as an example to see where our standards lie, right? Uh, you're echoing a lot. Uh, but, but when we look like, uh, when we look at media, right, we can't just say like, ah, yes, we need to change it. Right. Like, unfortunately we do live in that capitalist system where like for big Halloween Hollywood studios to deem it to be a change, like they need to see money from it. And, you know, uh, one thing with Hollywood in general is like black people at the lead, it, it don't really make them the money they're looking for. So if they're not getting the money and the returns on it, cause like, you know, it's not gonna give oh. them what exactly they want. It's because they don't look at us. They don't like looking at us. But what? Yeah. But I think as soon as as soon as Black Panther came out and you start seeing more black representation, people start to like us more. Not, they, once they go beyond just money, and then you find out that Black Panther made one of the, the highest marketing Disney Mar Marvel movies to date. Oh, then Lord. they find out there is money uh, in us. Okay. It's not, they just don't want money in us. Right. That's what it is. Okay. They don't want us. Okay, all right. <laughs> I don't want to get too far away from, from the point here. Um, so, <laughs> I, and to be clear, I, I tried... Oh, uh, Twitter. <laughs> or, excuse me. Sorry. I just want to push oh, God. a little bit. I did try multiple dating apps. And I didn't do go with them for the one thing. Really, I just wanted to meet people. And yeah. I just didn't have a way to do it. As an adult, I had no. I just went to work, and then I went. I came home, and I didn't know where to meet people. I don't drink, so I don't go to bars or anything like that. Um, so turn on dinner. Okay, let's, let's try to meet people. So that's why I, I did that. Um, and I will say though that so I did OK Cupid, but OK Cupid, um, it, uh, it's it's difficult because uh, because it's so slow. Right, like it's supposed that's supposed to be the advantage is that you take your time and you just 
again, supposed to look at the profiles. Some people just look at the pictures. Um, and you, you get more time to deliberate for these things. Um, but I, I found more luck both on, on Tinder, right? But more on the, the black focused one, the black the black Tinder. Because it was, an, it was simply a numbers game, right? It's like to try to connect with as much people as possible. It's a numbers game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I could just want to put that out there. Wait, so let me let me counter. Are you ask? Are you looking for just more? Are you looking for a relationship, a or get? Well, you said you just wanted to meet people. Okay, so that's you. You just wanted to meet more people, so you were looking for more interaction. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, okay. So then I don't even have to ask you that question. I'll wait till somebody, you know, says something. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm swiping right now, and I'm just looking for people to talk to. That's all it is. And if it turns into something more, awesome. And if it doesn't, awesome. But now, so that, as he, I, yeah, sorry. Like, are you re so we're done. Be my, yeah. No, that's it. That's okay. it. As he's drawing harsh conclusions, like, bro, I'm just yeah. chilling. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't I'm think, not even. It's a harsh conclusion. I don't think dating like, apps. I, are, as I, mean, is, I think dating well, I apps see where he's coming from. Should be a, a great way for people to. I think a great way to expand your circle because not everyone like and I. And, you know, if you, you maybe live in a big metropolitan area but not everyone does and like your dating pool gets gets very limited right uh because of your lifestyle whatever your lifestyle is my lifestyle right now is extremely and so i don't even have the op option of like going to a workplace at this point right uh so like where do i meet people like hopefully online dating uh will, will show me the way but right now like, well, I, I uh, to steal to steal yeah, man as he's point a little bit like Okay, no. Um, oh, okay. Finish, finish your point, and then I'll go to Mr. Banana. He's waiting patiently. Like, uh, I was going to say, like, to steal man as he's point for a little bit, like, even in the situations where we are in kind of closed off communities where ideological differences may be, like, really big and out there and it's harder to beat people, I would still say, like, and, like, this is less like trying to steal man as he, maybe dating apps shouldn't be the way we go about this because there are benefits to dating apps, right? But, like, there are other ways online we can meet people. How many of us right now are in 70 different discords that don't have anything to do with politics, but just because like, hey, we like uh, certain types of music or we like a certain show or something. Like you can interact with these communities. You don't necessarily have to fuck everyone you talk to, right? Like you can Why meet not? people. Get, well, you know, maybe not us, Beemo. We're gonna fuck everything, right? But you know, you can just meet people, make friends and shit. Like if something naturally arises, you know, like there's at least some basis there. Like we were both a part of this community for a while. We both like this shit. Like there's other ways online to do it. Uh, but I don't like the idea of like, we're just going to shit on like Tinder and all the dating apps because like there are some negative effects. There are negative effects with everything. Okay. Uh, what? Fanatic. Yeah. So um, I, I think the idea is that like a lot of times when you, there, there are specific um, things, if you really need like an ideological match, like they have like this Christian dating site for Christian people. Um, although there's some freaks on there that like are, like not really Christian, you know what I mean? I don't know, they be on some nonsense. Um, and then you had like I remember we used to have Black Planet, if y'all remember. That used to be like an OD dating site. It was amazing. You had so many black people there. Um, it was it was great uh, for anybody who was interested in online dating there. Um, but so th the idea is. It seems like for us to be successful, for I mean, it's not like you can never be successful on, t on Tinder, but it, if for to be most successful, you probably need to go to a segregated thing where Black people will be cherished and, and appreciated. Otherwise, they're going to be outed by the algorithm. And again, I don't think this is the algorithm's fault. Like a lot of times, these algorithms are reflections of societal like ideas. Um, algorithms are successful in that they typically will push people into the people who are attractive and who are likely to get matches, they'll push them into that space where they get those matches. And I think that's a good thing. Um, I, I, but I do think uh, even, I would imagine, I wish we had a like direct comparison because I would imagine OkCupid okay with, its, with its focus would probably yield better results for black people. Um, but I, I still don't think it's ever going to be particularly stellar because black people are just not like the, the most attractive in the dating pool. Um, I, there are specific websites you can go to um, and specific meetup place. Uh, Gambit was the one to inform me about this, where there are specifically people looking for black men to bang their wives. You can find those websites. They exist. You can find an area that. Oh my! I'm, I'm why do we saying, keep whatever, platforming this man? Into, this... There's a specific <laughs> thing for that. If you want the general success, all I'm saying, uh, Tinder just ain't it for a lot of folks. I will say Gambit. Obviously, Gambit knows a lot about this. Yeah, he does, apparently. <laughs> Gambit, this is, is a uh, at fucking your wife. 
It's his expertise. He has a degree in fucking your wife. Okay. Be careful. Well, if it comes this around, way. run away. Y'all demons, bro. Y'all on that demon time, and that's why y'all can't get no hits on Tinder, because y'all on that demon that, that, time, that's what, that's what it sounds like when your wife got God, okay? Like, that's what it sounds like when Gambit time. already made like a move. Gambit. Okay. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, You're uh, demons. So, I want to ask again about, so be more told about his uh, experiences, right? Um, Troops, you have your own experience with online dating? Truth's locked down. Uh, Chris, true. Um, quick closing statements. Uh, oh, I ask you, what is your, uh, what are your experiences of online dating? Oh, oh, um, in a nutshell, um, I haven't noticed racial discrimination. I don't know. It's kind of universal. I, I'm from Canada. It might be different for me. Like I've noticed, black girls treat me harsher than white girls. I don't know. <laughs> Truth is like I'm uh, too attractive. No, I, I don't get no discrimination. What kind? Um, what kind? I don't know. What kind it of, might you know, be region. It might be region. Just a black person. What are you talking about? Be region, right? I live on the west coast, so I don't know. Uh, um, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I wanted to point something out really quickly. My buddy, um, he went to Atlanta, and he said it didn't make any sense. Um, he, hate, he hates these dating apps because he said that they're pretty ridiculous, but he, was, said he, he said he was in Atlanta, and he started swiping for, like, 30 seconds and got, like, seven, eight matches. Yo, and, I know. And that's, it's, it's absurd. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because there's slim pickings Look, for various reasons. Where, I, where I'm at, there's lots of black people i mean in my state uh, or my uh, region anyway there's a lot of black people i don't i, I don't know i'm in new know. york maybe i'm in like, new york atlanta right. tinder is pretty simple like literally like be black like make sure they know you're college educated and don't take shitty pictures and just get to swiping it's really simple mm. like the, the like the odds are in our favor it's nice out there <laughs> i missed atlanta i lived out there for about 2 years i lived in georgia longer than that but I got married in, the, in, in Atlanta. I got divorced. <laughs> had a blast. <laughs> Let's just say, yeah, this, let me leave it at that. I'm snitching. Were you married? Yeah, I was. Oh, no idea. In Atlanta. That's oh. funny as fuck. He said I went up. I went to Atlanta, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be coming to Samuel's few years. Oh, look at me more, bro. Nah, it's Go ahead, be more. It's <laughs> weird when I, when I find people of my generation, I think you're in my generation, uh, who... Uh, of Mary, like I know, it feels like such a thing that still seems far away from me. So, like, I it was, yeah, it was a nice time. Okay, Prime but I, I, the crib. I, I, I don't regret the marriage and I don't regret the divorce. Okay. Just, you know. <laughs> yeah, go to the library, Prime. You got to get out the crib, man. You got to be like, hey, what book are you reading? You got to sit in the the right section and and get a get an articulate one because you look smart. You you need I'm not backing on women in the damn library. These, they're trying to fucking read, and this dude as he trying to. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Uh, no, you got to play it right. You got to play your cards. Hey, I I was looking for that book. You seem to be reading the book that I. Was uh, <laughs> and then and then she's gonna tell you, nigga. I'm cool, reading I'm reading book. it. Like, yeah, <laughs> reading it. please leave me alone. I have to study for my fucking midterms, dude. What the fuck? Okay. Oh man, this because mm. y'all don't be going in with the right. I, I'm I'm I'm. No, nah, we we we, I'm we just we just don't be people when they're big. Okay. Hey, we, we, we just are you, are you, we, are we just don't be right pestering now? people when they busy. You know. Asy, are you single right now? Am I single right now? I I have a date on Saturday. So you're single. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is, if you see someone, if you see someone reading a good book, right? Maybe you don't go up and be like, "Hey, let me pester you until you like agree to go on a date with me." Yeah, but they, they people, I be, I be hearing incel in the chat. No, y'all got it wrong, dog. Y'all don't know me. <laughs> Yo, oh, boy, you don't something. know me. You don't <laughs> I heard this before. Oh boy, I'm just built different. Okay, listen, yeah. I, this is I'm listen. You know what's funny? I'm voluntary, voluntary celibate. All right, bro, but your boy is still out here. Oh no, he's not just yeah. drop ball self. Go, go, go. Library. He's dead ass correct. I don't, I don't think I came up and said some shit about a book. She was in a certain section, and I just started talking about the the section and went from there. Oh, okay. So, Come on, not the truth. No, no. Just look, look at the library look like at a Jurassic Park velociraptor, like hunting. It's in his name. Of books. Truth. 
<laughs> tell that truth, <laughs> King. Tell the truth. Okay. Y'all need to know your worth. So uh, come on now. now. Now I'm gonna. Since I feel like we've kind of like gotten all what it is, I'm surprised. I thought this would be a, a topic we get more out of. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll ask you all then. Where do you where do y'all meet women? Where it's uh, like you're successful. Uh, I'll go first. I'll go I first. I feel like you just meet them wherever. I guess like, I'm not going first. Um, like like you uh, you just go. Over. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I'm fucking weird. I just talk to people. Like you're in the grocery store, you something sticks out about someone, you comment on it. You like, I like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like, I don't know. Maybe it's weird. I make friends like everywhere I go, and I don't know how I do it. But like, you just you're in the grocery store, you're in the library, you're in the line at the bank. Like, you just see people and you talk to them. Like, you talk to normal human beings. And if you like someone enough, or you find someone attractive, you get a phone number. Like. And you and you try to set up a meeting like it's I don't think it's like you have to go like everyone's like where do you find people like unless like I don't know maybe if you only see like if you, in your town you only see like old like women in like the grocery stores and in the bank and in the and in the like restaurants or wherever you go I don't know but like you just like go throughout everyday life and like um I guess if your everyday life is at home then the only place you can go is Tinder but. So like it's, it's, it's gonna sound like a meme answer at first, but like if you're in a small area where like shit sparsed out like that, unironically, you need to find out where the local hotspots for like you know the type of people you want are, right? Because if it's that small area where like you're only running to Margaret at the grocery store, she wants to talk about her eight and nine caps. Like you, <laughs> you ain't in late, bro. Like unless that's what you're going for, maybe not that. But like you need. To out where people let's, actually conquer. let's let's have love for uh people who love cats okay all right uh for we sure. appreciate cats. Our, our you know what uh, uh, you know, 89 year old year old cat lovers by the way uh, all about it's that yeah look man uh, when, I'm, when I'm romancing Granny's the lady, the one thing I too. want, <laughs> uh, the last thing I'm not, I get that prime, the last thing I want is to be like making the moves like, yo, you want to talk about like the Great Depression or some shit? And then like, all I hear is like kittens being born right below the bed. Like, it's going to take me out of the mood, man. I'm sorry. Um, you think yeah. it's outrageous. <laughs> oh my God. I would, I would, I would say like for me, the, I always meet all the oh, girls that I talk to at church. Like, uh, oh boy. predatory. Uh, he no, it's not church. predatory. It's you know, not predatory. Well, pride don't go to church. I'm, I'm just you saying for myself. That's how I do. Because friends? what ends up happening is um, there's a shortage of young black men in these churches. There always is. And <laughs> look at that smile. Um, <laughs> like, look, I, I'm not a predator. <laughs> I'm a musician. I'm not saying that. Part of my job. Oh, and what ends up happening is these mothers they see like a, a, a you know a, a respectful young black male and they start pushing their school. daughters onto you. That has happened on countless occasions. In three of my last relationships, uh, their they their parents were very much like, "Yo, we, you know, whatever." Or, well, actually, one of them was it was just her older sister. But one was older sister. The other one was literally her mom, like inviting me to her house, and then was like, "I'm just gonna leave you guys here. I'm cooking," and then just like left the room, and it was like awkward as hell. She was insisting, um, like it just that's just yeah. So that's I meet a lot of them in church, and then you know uh, when it comes to people's wives, you just got to get on those websites. <laughs> and, 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 and then the, the mama's like, whatever happened to that nice boy fanatic? Well, Damn. mom, he's, he streams. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't ever tell him about <laughs> yeah, don't oh, plot, that. Don't plot your trip to Twitch streams when you're trying to approach women, okay? Um, well, <laughs> so as, as a non-believer, that's not an option open, open for me. Uh, it is. Yo, the morality. They, well, well, look, they allow it's... non-believers in church. Just like, <sighs> let me tell you. <laughs> No, but for some, um, uh, don't so, become a project, Prime. Don't listen. Don't become a project. All right. Yeah. Don't become a project. Exactly. Yeah. They trying to change we, you, we, bro. We, we, <laughs> Some of the best places okay. I've met chicks were like um, just public events, like um, concerts, mm. uh, carnivals. I, I live in a tourist city. I live in Vegas, so. But um, oh, also, uh, I've had great little fl fucking uh, uh, at work, right? Target, tropical smoothie. Uh, Multiple trop because I get a lot of smoothies. Multiple tropical smoothie locations, like a fucking um. Just anytime I see something I like, approach, have a little back and forth, see if there's a spark, and then um, which kind of goes to what Dolphin was talking about. Just in general, wide net. Specifically though, like when I'm going trolling for chicks, 
Uh, it'll usually be me and my boys going out, uh, go to the mall, go to the club. Um, sometimes you can honestly just go to the park. You can go to like, uh, like if you had, like we have super big parks where people go and they just, just walk up to a group of people. Like a lot of times people are scared to approach a group. But if you're okay with approaching a group, there's chicks are always in groups. They're just always in groups out in the hen house. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, hen house strategy. But go ahead. So no, no, no. Oh. But yeah, uh, at parks, uh, dog parks, because I got three dogs. Oh my god, that's an easy win. Especially if you got a dog or a cute pet. Oh. Truth. Let me borrow one of your dogs real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but I, okay, look, look, two places I think that dude sleep on right. Is first off, I remember when I just got out of my divorce, so I was like, I got to get fit. You know, I got to get in the game. So I went to CrossFit. I met women in CrossFit, like in general. Like, it, it, it's, it's like, it's, it's like awesome. you, fin you, finish, you finish working out, and the first thing everybody wants to do is grab a bite or grab a beer. Like, you want to do something good, and you want to do something bad. So I met women through CrossFit. Another thing, too, is salsa dancing. Um, salsa dancing for salsa a couple dancing. reasons. True. True. First, if you can mate, dance. Uh, no, not even, not even, because I, not, hell no, because I started off in the beginner classes of salsa dancing, eventually got decent, still not good, but the women walking into the same course as you are are also beginners, so it's really, it's like, you're forced to partner up, you get a little bit of face time, smell good, you know, dress up, and uh, you'll be all right, like, salsa dancing is pretty cool, and another thing too is salsa clubs, or like, like, Latin clubs in general, it's a different culture, like, you can approach a woman and ask for a dance, and like, don't be a creep. Just fucking dance. And then after the dance, you walk away to, you know, say thank you. She comes back to you and she asks you for the next one. You better do something. Like, it's on you. You know what I mean? So it's like, uh, it, it's pretty neat. It's, a, it's a, like uh, Latin clubs and salsa dancing. It's a whole different world. Uh, it doesn't hurt to take some courses, dude. It's like, learn how to do a little bit of something, something. I am awful. I just, I, I, I just want to say, oh, no, wait, I just want to say real quick, because I see you popping up in the chat, like, nah, this isn't just, like, trolling for chicks. This works for literally anyone, right? Like, people are literally fucking everywhere. Like, you need to find out how to fucking talk to them, like Truth was talking about earlier. Like, find out how to approach people in general. It's not just chicks. It's everyone. I'm just looking to fuck. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Pyro's choice. Everyone's <laughs> not like you, Pyro. <laughs> I do this. Listen, no, I'm just a, no, no, wait, 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 hold on. It's not about like, you know, we, we make it like point. I'm just attacking the uh narrative in chat, the false narrative that we just trolling for chicks. Like, how do you pick up chicks? Nah, it's for everyone. I'm just looking to fuck. We just happen to be like talking about women at yo, this point. Y'all some dating coaches out here, bro. Y'all, y'all, the manosphere, y'all fresh and yeah. fit podcast. Oh, please. <laughs> My, like, I didn't even give advice. I just, mm, Cussly, I just you, what I did. You want to go? Because apparently everybody else. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he, oh, you, you you're just good. Cussly don't know. He's like 10. Yeah, what's up? What's up? God damn. What's up? Cussly, yeah, baby face, face, bro. Where do, where do the kids bring, pick up girls, Cussly? Tell us. <laughs> and oh, this I is mean, advice no one should follow here. Okay. We'll, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well hold on. Let's and be charitable, Cussly. No, no, like Cussly, if you are over 18, how do you pick up, you know, people you want to fuck or you oh, want to date or whatever? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Let me say something appropriate, though. Shut up, man. Like the Captain Planet shit. Real quick, real quick, everybody. Don't sleep on community college. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, you ain't wrong. That's all I'm he saying. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Cut sleeve. Cut yeah. sleeve. Um, yeah. If you um, want to. Yeah, okay. That's so, so, uh, and we're going to clear what we're asking here. What we're asking is where you pick, uh, where you meet uh, girls your age, right? Um, to go out on dates where you hold hands and nothing else. Okay. Sure. Nothing else, LMAO. Well, I mean, usually it's like, it's kind of exactly what B-more said. Like, it's going to be high school or community college. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I, I think in general, it depends on what you're looking. Like, if you're really just looking to fuck, um, you better, like, I'm sorry, you better go to bars and places because that's where those people are. Um, but like, it's uh, you, can, you can find someone who wants to, I fuck mean, it. but you, you can find people everywhere. But like, if you're like, I don't know, if you're trying to like pump numbers up real quick, like, you're gonna have to be one of these true. places. But that's in general, I think if you're looking for someone to like, looking to meet people, make connections, make friends with people, um, something that I found is just really good is like, if you want to, like, um, like, do something to improve yourself, right? 
like pick one thing like be more said salsa dancing is really good or the gym like crossfit or if you want to like take a class CrossFit. or something or yeah, if you want to like yeah, but, but, spend more time but, like hiking but adam like, adam what happens if you're already perfect what do you where do you go from there if you're already perfect <laughs> God didn't make I, perfection if, if in you're humans already perfect, if you are that's what you need to perfect, do i'm telling you um then, then pick out something that you want to do i guess like i guess if you have no wants and interests um you're a boring person get the fuck out of here <laughs> but like if you have like a want or interest like something that you want to learn or something that you want to do more like do it and like a lot of time like throwing yourself into something you're passionate in and like 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 doing something that's like like help like for yourself like people you just find people like yeah, you find it, it, women well, in CrossFit, you find them at salsa dancing, like Be More said. Like, um, you don't necessarily have to like always go looking. Um, if you're looking for like a soulmate, like just keep your eye open huh. while you're like trying, like focusing on yourself. Did you say soulmate? Adding to that, well, wait, explicitly adding to that, there's like a general rule that you can do to like always keep discussions open. Just think in your mind, if I were to choose one topic that I for sure know more than you about, what would it be? And then you can talk endlessly on that topic. All right, so don't listen to Cut Sleep. He's wrong. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't do that. So what if, if you want to talk to people, just keep asking them questions about themselves until they don't shut up, and then they'll leave that conversation thinking that they had a great time. What? That's the just actual. actual that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. Everyone. No, I'm not saying shut the fuck up the entire them. time. But like, oh, yeah, sure. like if you really want someone to like you. Just ask some questions about themselves and get them to talk about something they're passionate about, and then like honestly comment that. on it. And nah, like, and fucking like, wing it. I fucking really, the more that, that the other person talks, the that. more they think they're gonna. The, the conversation went great. All, all jokes aside, the reason I don't recommend that is one of the best ways you want to come off to someone is powerful and dominant. That's just my opinion. And yeah, you, don't want to come off, you don't want to come off as a fan. Because then they treat you like one, right? You, you don't want to come off like you, you're you super curious about them. You want to inspire curiosity about yourself. So uh, rather you want to filter their conversation for what interests you authentically and just find what you both have in common. And get excited. Make it fun. That's really it. Make it yeah. memorable. Like, okay, maybe I said the wrong thing. I'm not saying you shut up all the time and you don't ever talk and you just uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. But like, totally, I, I will like stake my life on this. If you let the other person just talk about themselves a lot, they're gonna like the conversation a lot more and they're gonna think the conversation was great. Like, it's, it's they just might true. not remember you though, they might not remember anything noteworthy, right? Like, versus you could find out no, you they're both. They're going to remember you as that guy who had a great conversation with them. Especially if you ask a few questions and they get really deep. And like, you but you should honestly give your feedback on stuff and like, don't be like a bitch about it. Like, let's play it. This is somebody you're attracted to. Odds are they're attractive to more than just you. So they're getting approached often. You're not the only one talking to them. And a lot of people are probably using the let's keep it positive method. Most people are probably having a decently positive interaction. You want to stand out, right? Even whether it's business, platonic, or romantic, you want to stand out. Um, I mean, just look at Aflac. Why, what the fuck is a duck doing selling car insurance? It, it, you'd be surprised how just even being goofy, being silly, being dark and mysterious, being broody, have some character trait that's authentic. Don't fake it. But find, like, accentuate who you are and, and display it in a very charismatic kind of way and then again yeah just link up where you guys have things in common um by the way sometimes things in common are not even topics they can be um emotional tonality so you might be with somebody who likes being i don't know some people like taking charge of the situation and they like being having their ego stroked some people like being humiliated and are weird like that and actually it will will respond well to humiliation like you got to be able to know shit like that so that's why I'm saying it's more like you want to catch the vibe and, and kind of like link up with the person and control the conversation in a way where they're, they're left like, man, that person had complete control of that. They, because of that, they steered it into a positive place. I hold them responsible for it. And I just can't stop thinking about what we were talking about. Like you got to leave them with something to remember. It's funny, when I was younger, I used to make shit up because I was, <laughs> I feel like a lot of young niggas do that. I don't care what nobody say. Because you just, you start to realize that they get high off the excitement of, of the conversation. And you just, you know, you might tell a long-winded, exaggerated story. 
But then when you get better at it and when you get more experience, you can tell your own stories. You know what I'm saying? Are you instructing us on how to lie to people? You're literally baking it to make it. You don't have to do think, this. What do you think it all is? You don't have to do this. Yeah, what do you think it all is? Uh, he was no, saying when he was I, younger. I, I don't know. He was saying when he was younger, so I don't know. Okay, okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. When he was yeah. younger, he yeah, used yeah, to lie to people. Have an ex- yeah, okay. Well, he's saying he didn't have any experiences, so like... You didn't have like. Big, I'm just, big, I'm yeah. just memeing. I'm okay. just memeing. Right. Yeah, but, but you know, any young people out there, you can skip that step. You know, you can be honest okay. and get better at being honest. Uh, I, I think a lot of this conversation is circling like, how the fuck do you approach people and talk to them? Because like the idea of like, where do you find women? Like literally, just go the fuck outside. Go somewhere. You will see a woman. No, 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 that's not fair. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 wait. Let me. Hold on. Wait. So no, can I clarify? Wait, like, I'm not wait, taking wait, every situation. I'm saying in most uh, situations what, what, that people what, are talking what, about. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Um, it's not fair because uh, this is something you hear often. It's like, oh, just go outside. I mean, just go outside. Uh, yeah, like, that's not what I said. Not everyone wants to be. That's what you said. Um, so, no, it's not. Oh, my God. Stop. Please don't interrupt me. You know, knock it off. Thank you. Great. I appreciate that. Um, so I, I hear this all the time. You, you, you go out, like go outside and, and women are there, but like it's more than that. Like people don't want to be approached at all at, at all points in time. So like, lots of people like are is there inappropriate places to uh, approach, especially for like a romantic relationship, right? And there are places that are that are easier to do these things than others, right? Places that put people in a mood uh, to be looking for those. Um, uh, connections um where other places aren't right so i think it's an honest question to ask where uh to find these people like where, where well, would be the best places let me be the, very specific the, well no hold on be more the reason i word it uh, the reason I, hold on the reason i said what i said right is like i didn't say just go outside that's like a huge mischaracter i'm saying you need to learn how to talk to people and that's a huge part of it right learning when is the right time to approach someone when someone might not uh you know learning how to take those social cues of like you know what i'm gonna politely push you aside because i don't want to deal with people it's all learning about like how you need to converse with people in that social aspect you're 100 percent right prime Mo- uh, there are some people who don't like being approached there are some places where you can't do this shit it's about learning how to do it because there are issues where like dudes will hear a lot of the advice we've given and then they will go into situations like work or like school or something yeah. and make advancements that aren't just like you know they're, they're like denied and they don't catch the social cues that like i'm being denied politely that's that's what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah, okay. that's so, facts. That's, um, I don't I think would, that's what I was getting at, but I see where you're coming from. So I would rather just be specific, right? So like overall, like guys, learn how to take uh, uh, this uh, rejection like a champ. Don't take it personally. Unfortunately, a portion of this is the number game. Second, group events. So like I've legit met women through boot camps, salsa dancing, CrossFit. Um, rock climbing events, indoor rock climbing events. Like literally, you like, yeah, just go outside is it's too easy of a take. Don't just go outside. Go outside with a purpose. You know what I mean? So it, it's all types of dancing that you can go to classes for. And then once you get proficient, then hit the clubs. Once you get proficient in these environments, you'll learn how to talk to people. But uh, overall, just don't be an asshole. So I get when Troop says like, I get you right. Like I, I, I you say dominance right. Hopefully you meant confidence, right? Because uh, when like, I say dominance, it's control. Like I, I even do that when I talk to grown men. It's and they'll do it back. But yeah, I'm it's trying like, to help you out be, here, and you just don't double be down, scared, bro. Don't be scared to grab the conversation by the horns. Like too okay. often, people are passive. Don't take passive roles. People don't respect passivity. They respect confidence no, and bold. Every everybody's different. It's no, no use. That's at, look, here, look. I don't want to hear it. Look, Truth. look. People listen to this. Take this out. And no. Movement. So yeah. look, let me tell you why this is bad advice, right? So like, Troop is asking p- guys to be dominant, be assertive, be tough Wait. almost. Wait, but, look, check this out, though. If that is not in your temperament, if that's not who you are, and you're going to go out and, you know and try to attract women faking it, you're going to get found out. Plain well, and no, simple. It's not about, no, no, it's not about faking it. It's about, I feel like everyone has that. That's just confidence. A good example is this. Let's say That's I'm why talking I said confidence. Let's say I'm talking to a Yu-Gi-Oh expert, right? Okay. And, and, um, and I know nothing about Yu-Gi-Oh. I just remember this shit from my childhood. Yeah. And I say, and this is a passive, kind of meek, insecure person. And yet I say some erroneous shit very confidently about Yu-Gi-Oh. He's going to step. That's not true. You think that. 
And meanwhile, I thought he was, he knows this. He's confident about this. This is his space. All of a sudden, you'll see him get bold and confident. So I'm probably going to just assume he's correct. He might fuck around and be wrong. He might have all that expertise and be wrong, but that confidence made me think, hey, fuck, he does know more than me. He's pretty damn sure of himself. People respond to confidence because, honestly, it's usually connected to truth. Your confidence look, is hard to fake, look, as you were just alluding look, to. You, what, what well, you I'm not said, saying that people should go learn to fake it. I'm saying that the name doesn't miss. I'm this, saying that, that like, everything you said, I'm you said it so confidently. No, no, Truth, real, hear me out. People need to practice exposure. They need to go out there. And the reason why I say the confident, uh, the dominant part is, it's not that they need to try no. to let the other person out. Truth be heard. Don't no, be seen more. Let truth be heard. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Truth, I'll, Lord. I'll wrap it up with this. This is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, they please wrap it up. Confident in bringing up topics and steering it and asking questions and probing and and not because a lot of times people go into conversations as people pleasers. Don't be a people pleaser. Be Ooh. capable of making fun of someone and teasing them and and holding them accountable to being goofy. Uh, or if, you just when I say dominant, it's it's you take charge of the conversation. It's In not that. You, Initiate. I, I think I think what he means, Control. like not to like try to steal my land. You let me know when it's my turn. Wrong. I think he <laughs> wants people to be more active in conversations. You don't have to be dominant, but like be confident, like be okay with speaking up about like what you think about things. Don't just take the other person's position. When you're talking to someone, actively listening, show them that you're listening, comment on the things that they say. And like take an active role in the conversation and don't let this conversation run by you. Okay, look, um, true, 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 true. You what you said, you said it so confidently, you fooled Azzy. But to be blunt with you, you didn't fool me. <laughs> and not only did you not fool me, you're not gonna fool a lot of women. So just being yeah. dominant in a conversation doesn't get you shit. Be confident. Be confident. Because if you're gonna bullshit, people are, you're gonna get found out. It doesn't matter if you're bullshitting funny. about the subject. If you're bullshitting about your persona, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, this is terrible advice for the average man. And this is actually the reason why dudes get caught up in some bullshit. I'm a young person. I don't know who to believe. Prime, help me out. It, oh, Lord. Like, true, I understand. You're, you're unfortunately true. No, no, you stop too. So, 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 so let me more finish. What I'm going to say, truth, is maybe you're on to something, right? Maybe. And this is me being charitable because, look, in conversations, you don't have to always be dominant right but i will say is that example was terrible okay no. uh, so, so all so the wording might have been off i like the choice of uh, active um the point is too often i'll find people go into conversations and they and they're scared to be offensive it's, look at gordon ramsay that is the best fucking example Just do not be scared of being not liked People will gravitate to power and confidence and boldness because really all they respect is competency. That's what people respect. They respect competency he, and, and then like yeah, these but if, if he wasn't competent, then he wouldn't be as as uh you know as uh excellent and uh as well received as he is exactly. because he's such a great chef and exactly. he, he says whatever he wants to say, we let it pass. Exactly. He's, he's a blonde white man, but you know, that's they look. so often what I'll even say is like people treat talking to the, the individuals they're attracted to romantically differently than when they're talking to their friends. It's like, no, treat them the exact same way you talk to your friends, but just add on the fact that you want a sexual relationship, perhaps. Right. All that should do is make you more angled towards that. It shouldn't make you more insecure. Like, because. If you conceptualize it, you're not insecure talking to your friends. I mean, you're kind of just like bold and ah, fuck you and take it how you want it, motherfucker. Like that's dominant. That's kind of, I don't care how passive you are. People usually will have their border and they'll be, well, if they're healthy, hopefully. They're communicative of here's my boundaries. Don't cross my boundaries. I'm, I'm a proud, strong person and you're not going to cross me. And hey, you know, that's my line. But then when they're with someone that they're trying to get with, all of a sudden they become people pleasing. And that's all I was really trying to hammer home, yeah. this idea that you have to be 100% opinionated, 100% your so, individual self, yeah. because that's what's being- Look, that's, okay, no, no, honey, I think- Be, I think, be okay, authentic I think, and be honest and have opinions. That's what he's like, saying. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He's saying- Have, just, have a fucking okay. backbone. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my than, overall I, point was- This is a- yeah, Go ahead. On, but yeah, I think, I think this is not too- I can see why the words, because the words were maybe not the best ones chosen, but yeah. but his his thoughts that he's trying to convey here 
um, if this is indeed what he meant, um, I think is, is pretty fair, right? Like, um, we are going to these situations, don't simply just agree uh, uh, with the other person, right? So that they will like you, like, oh, yeah, sure. I, I do like this band that I've never heard of. No, that music is great. Oh, and then they ask you about it. Like, oh, actually, I don't know anything, right? Like, um, don't, uh, yeah, take their... Look. Yeah, yeah. So just um, be yourself and, uh, mm. you know, ha be, don't be afraid to argue with them, to disagree and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I feel like this is it's pretty simple, right? Yes and no. And yes and no. Uh, man. Some, listen, listen, because some people say be yourself, right? I'm about to start saying it, bro. Unfortunately, being yourself could be shit. Like you, you, you possibly might require some changes, right? And this is the whole point of taking rejection like a champ. Like internalize some things. Look, look inward, right? Mm -hmm. But this is why I, I offered some charitability to Troop. I told him at the end of my statement, after my long wind winded statement, I told him, look, let me be a little bit charitable here. It's just your example's trash. I said the example was bad because my <laughs> overall point is right. Is that dominance and confidence don't let them don't intertwine them don't think they go hand in hand because if at the end of the day you're going to get found out well, like so, <laughs> well when you say found out i think that confidence yield uh, brings dominance a good example is let's say you're in you sales. don't need to be dominant to be confident no no here's why i call it dominance you need okay. leadership by the way maybe i'm just i was a very insecure anxious person when i was younger and to me, standing up for myself, I looked at as dominant. So maybe other people don't even see what I consider dominant. Yeah. Dominant. So like an example is, let's say you're in sales and you're talking to a client and you have a certain amount of time to interact with him because you have a schedule, but you still need to get the sale. How do you tell him to stop talking about some shit that's irrelevant, get back on track to the sale, keep your time schedule on, on point without offending him, right? Like that's a dominant thing to be able to say, hey, I'm going to need you to stop rambling about he that. Means leadership. You mean direction leadership, which exactly. what if, if you guys, I have a book for you guys. All right. It's called the, the four things women want from a man by A.R. Bernard. Great oh, book has yielded results. You heard of this book? Yep. Uh, he, 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 yes, he's, he's single. Don't be recommending so books. Sounds like, things. Sounds like oh, sorry, was, sorry, was he trying? Oh, no. Let him. Let him let I'll let y'all say all the nonsense okay, y'all wanted to say, bro. Go ahead. Four things that you should be trying to uphold, men or women. You should okay. be strong. You should be. You should have some type of strength of character, strength of personality. Uh, you should be consistent in what you want to do, what you are. You should be disciplined and you should be mature. All right. You should be consistent. This is a myth good one for you. You should be consistent. You don't consistent. have to be consistent because if you're consistently you wrong, you should consistent. probably not be wrong anymore. I'm so, honestly <laughs> not saying consistently wrong. If you consistently wrong, you probably consistence. Not. Like you literally, like again, oh, this is the whole point of like come on, if man. You I'm are, about to say some good stuff. You are here fighting me, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck you because this is terrible. If, oh my god, you know what? what? Everybody, don't come to Twitch for dating uh, advice. I'm gonna leave it. At the, that. That's the one good thing that's been can, said all uh, night on this subject. Consistently, don't be a consistent jerk unless unless that yields you results and you can get people. Some people are consistent jerks and they get women. Who well, like don't be, don't be consistent? Don't, come consistent on, be more. Listen, a don't be a consistent. Uh, don't don't consistently break the law. That's what I can say. You, you might end so, up in jail. Uh, you might not end up with any results. But, but, okay. But, the, if you want me to clarify, but the jerk. But, but they hold on. Doing but, but right the now. jerk thing. Don't come to Twitch for dating advice, Chad. Uh, but the jerk thing. Let's, let's 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 jump on that for a second. The jerk thing is supposed to be that those guys are happy to be confident, right? And people respond to confidence, as was stated before. So, um, maybe I don't call it confidence, jerks, but just. Confident, no, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, right? Or oh, it's not discipline, it's decisiveness. Uh, learn how to make decisions for yourself, learn how to make them consistently, learn like when to make decisions. Like what Truth was saying, if you need to initiate conversation, you need to make the decision and you need to do it. You need not, you can't wait on it because you'll miss your opportunity. When you when, learn to make the decision to shut up and let somebody to talk, you know, you, you have to be very, you, you gotta be. You know, you got to be consistent on it, too. You can't be wishy-washy because people won't 
know how they feel about you. And that affects your relationships with any relationship. I just found the uh, concise way to describe what I was trying to say earlier. Oh boy. Uh, the, uh, no, we have to, have to you, uh, sorry, no, we don't you have can to go with like- You can say it later, be, be grown, all yeah. right? You, you listen. So be grown, like mature, more. Don't be kid. We've covered it. Holy and, uh, shit. Like we've, yeah, we've, let's... we've covered this. Like <laughs> you don't need to say it like a, a fifth time. We got it. We got it. All right. Um I, I was gonna say uh that so in terms of uh where to meet people, um I, I think I've said this before on stream. I don't know about here in the States. I haven't found a place quite this amazing uh here in the States. Um but if you have um you ever travel internationally, uh Pro black people in the Philippines. Okay, uh, I, I've heard I've heard stories about that, but I'm not. Anyway, uh, uh, what I sorry, what what are you doing? Uh, okay, oh, sorry. Um, language exchanges. Give it a try. Go to a language exchange. Uh, it's simply a place where people go and like practice their language skills of people of uh, the, uh, um you know. From other countries and uh if you know english then it's super easy for you uh, <laughs> those places oh, are hook up spots holy crap oh, uh, oh, I, I went to i went to one and every guy that i went with it went away with at least one number most of them uh walked Ooh. away multiple numbers <laughs> and i I, yeah. I had a date the very next day i'm just telling you Right, right. So, wait, 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 tell me more. What, what do you find these? What are these? Like, they're like meetups, like in person, or yeah, they're like meetups. Like, no, no. So there's just like a group of people who get together, right? Okay. Like, it's organized by some sort of by. Is it like a website? Like, what the hell? I'm trying to. This is some good stuff. Yeah, uh, just um, they, you could just uh, search for them. I'm sure there's plenty of okay. them. Okay. Uh, there was one wait, that was is? the okay. one that I went to was sponsored by like the the Couch Surfer Association or something. I don't know, um, but they had they happened uh, to sponsor one. We went there, just women all over, and they all come to you, especially if you're an English speaker. They all come to you. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, you just have your pick. <laughs> Can I, Rob, I, don't... Rob is really saying he wants women to come to him, bro. That's what he's saying, bro. Uh, it would he be wants nice. to be Fuck that. the babe nice. magnet. That's what he's that saying. That would be he nice. Be a babe magnet. I wasn't, I wasn't that, exactly that's saying that. But, I'm just saying that it is, that's what happened. That's what happened. I'm literally adding up to that point, I mean, that's also a sustainable thing. Why, like, yeah, why, like, people have to make the first step or, like, who makes the first step. That's also a societal thing. But the specific thing I wanted to touch on is, like, no one brought up attractiveness in that conversation. How much does that play a role into, like, uh, these types of things? Well, I brought it up. Oh, directly. really? Saying, hey, 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 like, I, look at me. Wait up. I will say, Wait. I will say it's, it's, it's pretty about. direct, like, right? Like, uh, if you find someone to try, I, like, I don't, like, it, it matters to an extent right for me personally if i don't find you attractive odds of me approaching you in that way where i might want to go for a date or get your number probably not i'll and probably approach you to be your friend and whatnot but like that matters a lot to me like i do think with you know the the second head you know yeah don't be too eccentric don't stink don't offend people don't hurt people you know if your breath is hurting people you, you don't don't think you're gonna so get constantly. any when it comes any marks like i did say i did say earlier right like uh crossfit boot camps like these are places where you are That's going right. to eventually to improve your sex appeal women are showing up to you know to get in better shape also so it's just like oh no it's a mix it's be a more good into mix them right ufc there. fighters bro be more into ufc fighters bro he into oh, some my. crazy he like women who who, who are First high, off, i know women who go to those the, to the boot camps yeah, those yeah. women are hyper it, hyper fitness life together some of them oh, are yeah like, you know, it's, it's just nice hard. but these women are borderline they're all fit they're all personal trainers man these women are the od these up, women bro. are od bro come on be more you said have. crossfit you said crossfit yeah. crossfit is one of the most intense things on the planet no it's not there's levels to it stop being so fucking stupid there's beginners crossfit intermediate and then there's oh, believe it or not, there's a whole professional world. I obviously don't fit in there, right? This is like, look at me, you see? But this is fucking stupid. There's plenty of people joining boot camps of all body types. All right. Oh god. So, all right. All right. We have to all right. On this is like, all right. This is we're gonna pray. Okay, so we can probably uh, move on. Uh, thanks for uh, this conversation. It went in places that I didn't expect it to go. Uh, <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, what uh, hmm. those women will snap your neck. Wait, wait, can I can do can something I ask wrong? Uh, sure. Um, what do you guys think about the whole thing? Like, don't pick up women at like at gyms or women at the grocery store who have headphones in and stuff like that. Oh, I think that's good well, advice. I, I think you should leave women the fuck alone if they got headphones in. And it's all is, about, <laughs> I would it's all say about knowing store, when yeah. to approach. Don't, it's all about knowing when to approach people. Don't that play on to be the hardest difficulty if you're not ready for that shit. <laughs> Learn how to take an L. Sometimes oh you God. you got it. You got to pick up skills. You got to die. You got to pick up skills on a way to... What's it got? A roguelike? That's what it's called, right? I did get Sometimes a, you got to be a roguelike. I did get bro. a woman's number who was wearing headphones. Uh, she was... Um, we were at a subway platform. And I saw her... Like, I, I just saw her from the corner of my eye, right? She was really cute. Um, and she started moving. It was, like, a little weird, right? And I saw her do it again. And I talked to her, I, I talked to her on my shoulder, I was like, were you trying to dance, right? Like, or trying to suppress yourself from dancing? This is a person who apparently loves to dance and didn't want to break out and dance on the platform, but was like really into whatever she was listening to. Um, and we started a conversation, got a number. It's a possibility. It's, you can do it. I mean, Please. yeah, like that, 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 that's, <laughs> well, well hold, hold on, Azzy, hold on. Like, that's the thing, because like Prime actually brings up a good point, right? Because like, that's been a main rebuttal to like everything I've kind of said. Like, well, it's not always like this. And that's a really key important factor. Like, it is not going to be a 100% you can't date women who are listening to headphones. There are instances like Prime just laid out where like, yo, you, you might get lucky, right? You might approach someone who's open to that conversation and shit. Like, it's not 100% what I'm saying is like, yes, this is how it is. And you have to lead by this. Like, you are 100 Hundred percent right, Prime. Yeah. When it comes to something like that, timing is everything. But even still, um, I think attraction is based in in empathy, and in and and the root of empathy will lead you to presentation and uh, first impressions last a lifetime. So it's like if you meet someone in a suit versus you meet someone dressed homeless, same person, you're gonna treat them different. You're gonna respond to them different. You're gonna expect different things from them. It's just a fact. And you'll never be able to get that out of your subconscious after the effect. So there are certain ways you should go. Like, obviously, you should probably groom yourself. Right? You, should, you shouldn't stink. These are like the basic stuff. But it goes up from there where you can actually um, kind of cheat the system just by going a little bit out of uh, putting in a little bit extra effort into your presentation. It doesn't even have to be that hard nor expensive um and it's all to me about finding your unique style i feel like everybody has their unique uh look and you got you want to find that and maximize it and then um kind of like your own personal brand and then um oh yeah first impressions last a lifetime like you got to be cognitive of the fact that people are judging you like they're they're full stop judging you like that insecurity you have it's real now they're not as harsh as you pretend they are in your head no one's as harsh as you imagine they're ever going to be. But at the same time, they are still just simply going to be not interested, right? Like, especially if you're approaching people who you think are attractive, because then they're being approached a lot. Like, the more attractive someone is, the more approach they get, the, 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 you're competing now. Now you're actually putting yourself in a race. So um, I used to tell my friends who were not so uh, familiar, uh, don't approach... You can get practice just by making friends with girls, well, with people you're not attracted to. Like, just go talk to strangers and don't have no intent on any sexual relations. Just get good at talking to people and becoming familiar with them and being comfortable with strangers quickly. Because that way, when you do see the people you're attracted to, you can stand out from the pack. That's Dude, 1,000%. Dude, the, th the thing that taught me the most about talking to women was having, a, like, female friends. Like, when I was in, like, high school, I didn't have too many, but I was in college. I had, like, a ton of female friends for some reason, just accidentally. And, like, holy shit. Like, you understand, like, the things that, like, women have to go through, kind of, and you are able to, like, empathize with them more and, like, just, like, speak to them like people instead of, like, treating them differently, you know? How do you think I became such a, a well-merited talker, man? I don't hang out with dudes. The guys don't know how to talk. You oh, learn nice. talking by listening to women. You have to have female right. friends. That's what that's what you got to do. Okay. That's all I all, all, all okay. throughout my life. Women have always been the majority of my friends because I know. Thank God for wisdom, bro. Thank God for wisdom. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm who taught you? Okay. okay, all right. Let's just. <laughs> I think we've hit, hit this uh, topic. We crushed it. Um, but thank you for that.